Welcome everyone to the 2021 Women's Speech Chess Championship semi-finals. I have a new co-host for today, Katty. Welcome to the show. I'm happy to be here. We've known each other for so long, but we never done commentary together, which is a rare one. Exactly. Hello, Anna. Hello to everybody. And I was I was very excited, not only the because of the match today we are having, but because I also to commentate with you. That's a that's a huge pleasure. And um, I'm looking forward to, to this. Likewise, likewise. Thank you so much, Getty, for your kind words. The honor is obviously mine just as much. And this match is going to be another big one. We have one of the strongest female players of all time, Hu Yifan, facing her compatriot Le Tingchie. Le has eliminated Antoneta Stefanova, who was one of the other favorites of the field, to make it to the semifinals. And this is going to be, I think, another one of those close matches. We can take a closer look at the path of both players. How did they make it to the semifinals? Katy, what would you highlight when you recall some of these earlier matches of the players? Mm -hmm. Uh, the match uh, between Ho Yufan and Mama Deva Goldner was really exciting. We thought that Ho Yufan was a clear leader there, but then uh, she had some difficulties in the bullet section. But her next match against Bibi Sara, she just, I think she trained a little bit. And uh, yeah, the match between Bibi Sara was also very, very interesting. Um, about Latingly, she. Uh, she had a bit of advantage against Vaishali um, and against Antoinette Stepanova. I watched some games and it was such a crazy matchup. So I think those two ladies had a really, really hard way to come in here. And now they are competing each other. And I think that's very personal for these two ladies <laughs> as well. What do you think about this? Like two Chinese players... Indeed, and only one progression. of them can make it to the final. Kete, you summed it up so well. We also have a slide to show what is at stake because the prize fund is $58,000. First place, $20,000. And only one of the players of today's semifinal can make it to fight for that first place against Harika Dronavali. Harika qualified yesterday in a thriller against, um, we, we already showed it and now, sorry, I, I, we went back to that slide. I, I was wondering if we can bring it up on the screen. Katerina Lano mm -hmm. and Harika Dronavali played yesterday and it went down to a tiebreaker. Katya, I don't know if you got to follow the games, but the match was so close, always tied, that we needed a tiebreaker and we almost needed a tiebreaker of the tiebreaker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was following this. I, I could not, I could not. I was working and commentating on uh, Champster, but I was also following this match and the results because it was such a tight match and I had no idea how this this going to end. But here we have Harika Dronavali waiting for the for her opponent in the finals. Indeed, and the finals will be on Saturday, July the 3rd. The starting time will be confirmed as soon as we know who will be in the finals. Is it going to be Huifan or is it going to be Le Tingchie? The format is the usual one. We started the Women's Beaches Championship with 16 players and now we are down to the final two ladies in the semifinals. Harika qualified yesterday against Lano, as we mentioned, and this is the other semifinal match. The format is three different segments, 75 minutes of the five plus one, that is five minute, one second increment. Then we have 45 minutes of three plus one. And um, again, another blitz format and the final 25 minutes bullet, even faster time control and possibly more ups and downs. Exactly, exactly. I'm really looking forward for all these segments. I think and I hope it's going to be a tie match. And anyway, it's going to be lots of surprises. Maybe some upsets too. Why not, Anna? What do you think? Do you think it's an upset day or do you think the favorite Hu Yifan will qualify? Um, you know what? For these ladies, it is so important for both of them. In a Hoyu fan, she should, she wants to show everybody that even though that I'm not playing, I'm still the best female chess player. And latently, she represents Chinese uh, national team for years already. And she, she's young. She has lots of perspectives. She has already won so many tournaments. So she's also fighting for her, 
her words. So I think it's going to be a little bit shaky here between these two ladies. I also project a close match. Also, when it comes to the Blitz ratings, Huifan is number two in the world and Le Tingche is number three. So they are side by side when it comes to Blitz rating. And as you mentioned, Le has been training, been very active by Huifan, now has a full-time job outside competing at chess. I hope that what she said in one of the interviews is true, that she might return to competing actively again, but that... Only the future can tell. For now, she's competing in our online events, which is great. It's a treat to have her, obviously, and her opponent, Lei Tingjie. Will be an exciting match. We're going to take a very quick break before the players join us for the start of the Blitz Games. No. Yay. Good. Sorry, I wasn't sure if we have the slide about the, uh, of the, about the Katya match, so I, I was rambling deck because I was like what if we don't have anything to show and I wanted to talk about it a little bit <laughs> and you'll tell us on slack when yeah when we have the last game before the break right the Oi. usernames are hello one, two, three, LT. And uh, we found zero, two, two, seven. You found two, two, seven. Awesome. Ah, yeah, I always follow both so that it doesn't keep swapping the side. I didn't know this trick. I see. That's a smart one. Welcome back to the show, everyone. This is the semifinals of the 2021 Women's Speed Chess Championship hosted by Chess.com and Fide. Ketty, we are about to witness the start of the 5 plus 1 Blitz segment. Any predictions when it comes to openings? Mm, openings, I think we're going to see a lot of E4 moves today mm -hmm. uh, because uh, Hoyu Fan plays both D4 in D4 and Lightingly also plays both uh, both lines. And I also expect some, some sort of switch of the openings uh, after some time. Um, and what do you think? Uh, do you think one of these girls in the favorite in this uh, time segment? I think for the first ones, for the five plus one, especially, I would say 
Yifan, in my opinion, is the favorite. A bullet will be crazy. It might be the other way around because Lei Tingjie is a more active player. So it, mm-hmm. I think there for, for the speed of bullet chess being constantly in active competition or training helps a lot. And uh, Yifan herself said that she doesn't have much time for training now with her full-time profession. But the game has just started. And as you predicted, Kete, it's an mm-hmm. E4 opening. Yeah, here we have E4 opening. I'm not a E4 player, Yoranas. That's why I just know a couple of like main lines. Um, and I could not, I could not really recall the names of, of the lines. This is Rui Lopez. Oh, you know uh, it very well. I will complement each other correctly <laughs> because you are a D4 player mainly. I'm an E4 player. So we have it all together. Yeah, it could be really good if they switch at some point from E4 to D4. So uh, I, I would also, at least I would know the names of the openings. So it's Yifan with the white pieces in the first game and we have the Berlin defense on the board at the Champions Tour. This is a very popular opening and so we see it here too at the Women's Speech Chess Championship. The end game line, this position has been seen at so many super tournaments. It is a better pawn structure for white, but black does have the pair of bishops and it's this constant battle of will the bishops prevail or is it about the pawn structure and white being able to create even a pass pawn, this four versus three on the king side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've seen this uh, these games a lot lately. Uh, somehow players really like to play without the queens. That's sort of my style <laughs> too. <laughs> but but then you know, like when queens are off the board, you might think that oh, that's going to be so draw equal game. But no, no, it's not going to be that easily. They're going to play. Uh, there are some ideas here. Uh, and this game is uh, way far to be a draw. Absolutely. These positions can be very rich. The strategic battle, again, between the minor pieces and also will White manage to get the upper hand having more space and more active pieces. For now, Black still needs to complete the development of the queen side as well. And uh, we need to always remind ourselves that castling is not possible for Black because of that capture on D8 at the start. Yeah, yeah, well, you can trick your opponent in over the board chess, but online. (laughs) Has it ever happened to you that you accidentally castled in an over the board game? It happened. It happened to a very, very close friend of mine. Uh, And she had no idea about that. She played 90 moves or something. She won the game. Uh, And uh, some of our friends were writing to me and asking, like, why I cannot see the move after the game after 15 moves? It's like, I have no idea. And then she said, I came out uh, in the room. I wanted to analyze my uh, game and computer doesn't allow me to castle. And it's like, what the hell? And I started to analyze it more accurately. And then it turns that she played rook b1 and then rook a1 and then long castled. Oh. So that's why also broadcast stopped. And that's why computer didn't allow her to, to castle. <laughs> At least she won her game, even if uh, it wasn't exactly by the actual rules of chess. If no player realizes, if neither her nor her opponent was aware, uh, the game can continue in over the board tournaments, not in online chess. You are right that in online games, this cannot happen. The, the system doesn't let you make an illegal move. We now have seen a trade on E6, mm-hmm. which means that Black no longer has a pair of bishops. And I think it's getting more and more comfortable for Yifan to play this position with black still having a worse pawn structure now this e6 pawn 2 has become a weakness the g5 square itself and g6 squares are weak too and she's mm-hmm. just improving her position little by little i like g3 to make sure that there will be there will be nothing going on on the king side she can push uh, after h4 g4 if she wants to and she might bring the king to g2 in the future Exactly. I like this G3 move too. It's like she doesn't have to hurry uh, hurry up and uh, end the development of the queen side because she is, I think she is looking still for the perfect square for this bishop. There is uh, one perfect square here on G5 to eliminate the dark square bishop and then uh, knight can comfortably come on E4 and try to also control queen, a queen side. Or, or what do you think, um, where else uh, Hoyufan thinks to develop this bishop? 
I like your suggestion with Bishop G5, the square for sure is one of the main ones to go to. And I also like the fact that she's very patient. She pushes A4 to stop mm -hmm. any expansion from Black. Black cannot gain further space on the queen side. So she, she pushes A4 to stop the A5 pawn. And that also means that she is fixing the pawn structure of Black on the dark squares. Yeah, I like this. I like her style. She's just... Uh... She's dominating on the full board. It's not only she chooses the side or center. She tries to dominate uh, over the board and to avoid any counterplay uh, from the opponent. And that's that's quite annoying uh, style <laughs> style uh, of of the chess players because you never know. Like they never allow you to uh, to to choose some plan or, uh, you know, to have some ideas because they control the board and position actually allows her to do so. Very important what you highlighted that this is a long-term positional advantage that Yifan has and she is restricting the options of her opportunity. So there's not much of a chance for counterplay. Now after C4, uh, Black needs to decide whether to trade on D1. There weren't too many options for the rook where to go. And this is a beautiful position where all the white pieces are better than their counterparts. And the king still needs to make it some time to f7 to bring the rook into the game but then there's always rook to d7 so it's a bit troublesome how to activate the black rook exactly when she played bishop h4 f4 here i was like hmm this bishop is really good bishop here just to start between its its pawns but look at this she keeps also the uh, opponent's bishop on the board so there is no uh spot for the uh king to come on e7 and Very that true. stops Rook to come to the to the center. So also Rook is sort of locked on h uh, h8. Yeah, both the e7 square and even the the free f7 square is not a good option for the king because of Rook to d7. Now the question will be, of course, is how can White make further progress? Black's position is really restricted. But it's solid. There is no clear target that White can attack. The e6 pawn seems to be the most vulnerable. But if knight g5 then black can consider whether to trade the bishop for that knight. And I think it would be actually a good deal for mm -hmm. black because you get rid of one of the minor pieces, gives you a bit more room to breathe and, and the e6 pawn will not be hanging anymore. Yeah, I agree with that. Even if it, it costs uh, black a pawn, but uh, in the rook end game, in the rook end game, he, uh, she might have more chances to, to play for a, uh, for a draw. And uh, yeah, this is. Uh, I'm sure we we uh, we all like here uh, White's position, and also uh, maybe the bar here is um, it's not that dramatic, but it's just so comfortable to play here with White, and so uncomfortable to play with Black. Indeed, Yifan decided to push G4, so she went for a very concrete forcing line, which allowed the trade of knights on H4, but even like this, that rook has the H5, the black rook, but there's no entry squares, mm -hmm. it cannot go to any of the squares in white's camp, so even though optically it's an open file, it's not as useful as one would hope for. Uh, absolutely, absolutely, and... Um... What can be what can be the plan here for White to to you know get something out of this position because there are not much of the pieces uh, on the board. It's not an easy one. You are right. Uh, it is Yifan who tries to go for a king maneuver to bring the king toward the center, but this does allow rook to h3. I wonder if she go if she will go back to g2 to push the rook away, or will she continue with the king path? But then the rook of black will be active on h3. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, and in case if white tries to come back on g2 and then to trade the rooks and to play uh, bishop end game we see all these pawns are oh she's going for that <laughs> she's going blocks. for the bishop end game you predicted it correctly Katie. it is better the end game i think even if the bar is now saying zero zero i think white still has some chances because of the structure that the pawns mm -hmm. of black on the queen side are all on dark squares but with precise defense I think there will be no way of getting through, getting into Black's camp. 
I, I, I agree with that. My idea might be to, to centralize the king and then try to push F, F, uh, F5 up to uh, F, um, F5 to trade the uh, pawns and to create the uh, pass pawn over there and then to hope to get into the queen side. But uh, I'm sure there are several ways to stop this idea. Yeah, I'm sure that Ifan will try, but it's not an easy one. Good thing for white's position, you can try forever. You can go back and forth, do this, do that. Mm -hmm. And now G5, for instance, by, by Ting Jie is a committal decision. She wants to make sure that there is no breakthrough, but F4 is always a question and that creates a G pass pawn. So I think she, she evaluated it correctly that even though white has a pass pawn, the king on G6 and the bishop guarding the G5 square will be enough. But this is a position that she had to calculate and also just make sure that there's no way through. The e6 pawn is a key piece to, to not let white get through from e4 to d5. Yeah, that was the weakness of, of, of this game, but somehow it became a soldier which controls f5 and d5, very yeah. important square. I just I just put the pock face on because I I was thinking Yifan has made quite some progress by getting yeah. the bishop all the way to f6 so the question will be can she make it to e4 with the king to push the f4 bishop away guard the e5 pawn and then she will have bishop to d8 oh wow oh wow that is that is painful that is painful for black yeah, I don't see a way to stop it. I think uh, Lei Ting Jie was defending very well, but she may have gone wrong a few moves ago. Uh, we we could bring the position back after the mm -hmm. game is over, but the time situation, both players below 20 seconds, means that we shouldn't really go and analyze different positions. King and pawn in game with the G pass pawn and black has doubled C pawns. It's a virtual pawn up that I think is winning here. It's decisive winning position. I think it's winning to you. White will just uh, push the pawn um, as far as black allows, and then f6 square is um, is the uh, important square, and that's where um, white will start to collect the pawns. So that's why here black decides decided for some counterplay, but uh, queen is superior of superior in this position. Five pawns are not that strong against the queen. It is, Ifan wins the first game. Lei Ting Jie was defending so well for so long, but it was a tough position to hold forever and ever. It, eventually, she made a mistake when they were both very low on time and Ifan won the bishop end game. Then in the king and pawn game, it was a very instructive position with Tsuk Tsuang uh, incoming, so black couldn't keep the king on g6 forever. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but that's the position that is worth to study because we, uh, we had very interesting... Uh, uh, same color and bishop end game and then pawn end game and i think it's uh, it was very instructive game it was see. a really instructive end game indeed and this too is an instructive position for a different reason it's a theoretical opening very theoretical position of the sicilian the shevening and variation and uh, we see yifan taking some time here mm -hmm. to play nice c6 yeah, I'm really surprised uh, that of of her skills. There's there's no question that he has she has uh, uh, amazing skills, but playing not to playing for so long, right? Several years already. She still remembers all the lines. Yeah, she's ones. incredible. She also competed in the most recent and still ongoing Champions Tour event, which is not an easy field to take on when the world champion and the rest of the crew are your opponents. So kudos to Yifan to, to manage to compete at such strong events, even if uh, nowadays she has a full-time job at the university and doesn't have much time for training. Yeah, exactly. We were wondering what is uh, what is her subject? What is her position at the university? We wanted to ask. Any idea that uh, anything you know maybe about it? I haven't heard of it exactly, but maybe I've, our viewers know she studied at Oxford. That was the last time I met her. She came to see the World Chess Championship match in London. Judith and I were the host and then we took a selfie, the three of us, when she came to see the match between Magnus and Fabiano. Yeah, nice. That's nice. 
she's taking her time, but also letting Jess started to spend a bit longer on these moves. So the time situation is balanced. Again, these first games for the first hour, we still have an hour of this first segment. It's five minutes with one second increment. Welcome to all of you just joining. I know it's early for many of you, especially if you are located. Um, if you're based in the United States, for some of you, it might be extremely early, especially mm -hmm. on the West Coast. So thank you for joining us both on YouTube and Twitch. This is the semifinals of the Women's Speeches Championship, Hui Fan versus Le Tingjie. And only one of these amazing ladies can make it to the final. Absolutely. I was checking the time in China because I always, I really want to know where, what time situation is, uh, is there. And uh, for the moment, it's like 20 minutes before 8 p.m. So it's quite late. It's quite late um, uh, for some people, for myself. But um, yeah, it's, it's absolutely individual. Definitely. Time zones are a confusing thing, but uh, chess hopefully is a bit easier when it comes to at least following these games. I feel like backseating during <laughs> games of Grandmasters is a lot easier than actually coming up with the moves. Of course, we have the help of the evaluation bar. Yeah, we have the help of our viewers. So thank you so much again to all of you for joining our show, for participating in the broadcast. And I think it was a good suggestion by many of you that it's time for predictions for our viewers too. I would like to encourage all of you on YouTube and Twitch to let us know who do you think will qualify? This is a knockout system. We are in the semifinals. So either Hui Fan or Le Tingji, I will need to say goodbye to the event today. What is your prediction, folks? Let us know. Yeah. Uh, one of these players will say goodbye, but with a, with a very heavy purse with money <laughs> indeed we have a price fund of fifty-eight thousand dollars, but it that purse can be even heavier if they qualify and play for the first place which is twenty thousand dollars twenty thousand dollars what would you buy anna 20 with twenty thousand dollars how many chocolate bars would you, <laughs> many, would many you buy? chocolate bars get it now that you're saying it that way it's so many chocolate bars maybe i would have chocolate bars for the rest of my life and my children grandchildren could have chocolates too oh chocolate bank <gasps> chocolate bank you're gonna open chocolate bank <laughs> I like the suggestion. I might con consider this business project, Katie. Thank you. <laughs> All this chocolate, then you can, you know, open up when you have some grandmasters coming. How you find coming at your home and you can open up and like, oh, this chocolate is from 2021. <laughs> oh, like with wine and yes. the older it gets, maybe the more valuable. <laughs> That's a good idea. I need to look it up. Although chocolate might expire sooner than wine or beaten, beaten yeah i guess i need to make some research on this in terms of the position we have opposite side costling which is so exciting always katie we're gonna see white trying to attack on the king side the pawns are already on the fourth rank ready to launch to the fifth and, and sixth rank soon i believe and black has a semi-open c file as usual in the sicilian maybe two she'll be able to push a5 and b4 at some point uh, yifan here with the black pieces or knight b6 knight c4 is another typical maneuver exactly and we have to point out also this bishop which is uh, directly attacks on g7 we might see some sacrifices over there if white managed to uh to bring more forces on the on the king side meanwhile bishop c6 i think she is she's trying to prepare b4 maybe like yeah, it could be to to put uh, some um, help, <laughs> support the b5 pawn, and then a5 b4 is possible, or rook b8 b4. So in both cases, to try to push the pawn mm -hmm. to b4, either with a combination of the a pawn or the rook coming to b8. I like this idea for black, but also white's attack can be very fast if white pushes g5, mm -hmm. and then h4 h5 h6 or g6 would be. Yeah thematical pawn break we shall see who's going to be faster because it does take quite some time to push the pawns all the way to the sixth rank exactly i played these kind of positions myself uh, with opposite um side castling and it is every every tempo here matters and you have to find the correct uh, plan 
because there are several plans for both players, like which pawn to push first, this or this, or how to sacrifice. There are some sacrifices too, this kind of typical sacrifice, 95, maybe it's even working here. It takes the, it takes the bishop is hanging, bishop is hanging. Uh, she has to, she has to uh, consider this knight d5 move as well. Uh, and black has, as you mentioned, many, many plans to push b pawn or just to get oh get it's exactly what you oh. said we mentioned rugbit you mentioned 95 <laughs> we are doing great so far with the prediction i don't know if it's good or bad for the players that they follow our moves yeah, I maybe, know, bad. We're, we're, we're <laughs> maybe bad we're good at predictions at least it yeah, was I've taken seen. with the bishop because of knight d5. Well, you explained that if pawn was going to capture on d5, then after pawn takes d5, both bishops were going to be hanging. So white wins the piece back. Instead, we see bishop takes d5 and e5. So now white has a passed pawn on d5, but it's this situation where the d6 square is well protected. So it's not going to be that simple to push mm -hmm. it. Plus now the bishop needs to leave the long diagonal um, bishop c3 was still an option, but I felt like maybe b4 then will be even stronger for black. Yeah, black is trying here to simplify a little bit the position because white has this power, powerful bishops on the on the board. And if white starts the pawn attack, h4, h5, that's going to be really, really uh, hard to play against two bishops. Uh, and now here, it seems like black is the first who starts the attack. It does seem like because the b5 is opening up too, so semi open c5 like already had, and now the b5 too is ready for black's heavy pieces. I think Ifan is considering whether to take on b4 with the bishop or the rook, or is there a third alternative? I was assuming she was going to take back immediately, but she took a moment to think bishop takes b4, very natural, and now she can bring the other rook to c8. There's a b5 pin, so bishop a3 or bishop c3 are possible too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This can be an idea here of uh, of black and then sacrifice on b2. That can be really, really a powerful idea here. What is white doing here? If black captures back with a bishop, then queen comes on d3 and we have two pieces on d file. Um, black can still um, guard d6 uh, bishop with rook b6, but white has bishop on a3. Yeah, this is suddenly very chaotic with the forcing line while sacrificing a pawn for the initiative. And I think that's what she's calculating indeed. What you mentioned, queen d3 to put pressure on the minor pieces on the d5, rook b6, bishop b3. Maybe then it's time for black to place either the bishop, well, I guess the knight. No, it has to be knight first, knight to c5 knight to, to find, keep yeah. the pieces on the board. Mm. Yeah, I was, I was, I thought that e4 was there some. Um, sneaky move but that was not working uh so here we have i think black black got really good position black got what uh, she wanted here uh the the full concentration right now is on the queen side and there will be some sacrifices on b3 as well i think so i think it's sacrifice time knight takes b3 or rook takes b3 both of them were very appealing yifan is up when it comes to material, she is sacrificing the knight, but it feels like it's just a temporary sacrifice. She's giving an intermediate check, not taking the queen on c7 just yet. Now I think it's time, and she's up two pawns with very active pieces. I think the only only cool thing for white that gives some hope is that they're opposite colored bishops, mm -hmm. but with rooks on the board, this position is still very much about the situation of the white king, and now the a pass pawn is running too. Time is a factor, of course, in speeches that matters a lot. And Yifan has less time. So she just needs to hurry up with this one second increment to not run out of time. Exactly. And uh, White here tries to find some counterplay and especially to find some moves which which attacks the opponent. So uh, how Yifan has to spend more time to find the solution, how to how to defense. Here we have open G file. Rook will come up. Uh, here on the seventh rank and we'll try to make some some checks 
a uh, good thing for black is that these pawns are not uh, very close to each other so in longer perspective in the in the bishop end game this position will be winning for for black mm -hmm. but when we have pair of rooks on the board it's so hard to predict that this is gonna go to the bishop end game and yeah and in a checkmate oh katie now it's now it could be checkmate because if king e4 then rook b4 check wins the game you can push c4 you can play rook d4 but it was gonna be checkmate mm -hmm. so i think white had to give up the rook for the bishop but it was already a lost position late thing here resigns and it's a two-point lead for yifan can late thing here turn the tables we see again a berlin defense the end game line yeah we have the same position let's see what they will change here but i think we're gonna have some um, some turns in here because th this is such a long day right at some point at some point how you find might um might feel a little bit tired and also latingly being an active player uh playing a, a lot of chess um um might give her some advantage in blitz and uh bullet uh segment I agree with you that uh, being an active chess player means that perhaps it, going into the second, third hour of the match, this this super, uh, this super, I would say super speeches. It's super speeches, I guess, the bullet one. Speeches and super extra speeches. Uh, it requires a lot of effort for an extended period of time. All these matches are minimum three hours on average. If there's a tiebreaker, it can be even longer. So you're right. It will matter that Lei Ting Chie is the more active player. It could be her advantage at the later mm -hmm. stage of the match, but she definitely needs to, of course, easier said than done, try to score before the difference in the match, the advantage of Yifan will be too much. Yeah, and to be honest, Anna, um uh looking too much is of uh, how you find and commentating that that too much is this is not something new she she has some advantage at uh five plus one segment uh and always the question is like what if it's the opposite like we start with one plus one then blitz and then we have three plus one and then we have five plus one so uh, you know like when you when you have some advantage at the mm -hmm. beginning like even two points or three points this is advantage you feel already that you are the winner but and then and in the bullet you can you know you can allow yourself to lose some some games or make some draws but what happens if it's the opposite that's it's an interesting really question tricky. what if it would be the the opposite order i like from the viewer perspective obviously as a spectator that we constantly are going toward the shorter time control so the very last phase is the fastest yeah. most high speed and action-packed part of the show and in bullet chess too even if a player goes into the bullet portion being three or four points down on the match score i think it's still possible to make a comeback in bullet because you can play so many games in 25 minutes of bullet chess Absolutely, absolutely. So what's happening in here? Uh, I I saw that it was uh, Hoyo Fan who changed here, and instead of G three, oh no, it was it was Latingly. She decided to play H six. Earlier it was H five, right? We had H5. Yeah, we have a bit of a different version of the same Berlin Endgame. Mm -hmm. The overall the overall strategy is the usual one. Again, it is a pair of bishops for black fighting against more space and better pawn structure for white. It has it has changed the structure uh, to a big extent. The fact that knight d5 was played and the trade happened on d5, so black no longer had doubled pawns, but it meant that after e6, which is a pawn sacrificed by Yifan mm -hmm. earlier, the c7 pawn was taken. A very interesting and not that typical Berlin position anymore. I think now it looks more like a French defense because of the pawn structure and the e5 square, but still yes. a very rich position if just, strategically. Mm -hmm. If you just came here at this point, we would never, we would not say that that's, that, that position we got from Berlin. <laughs> very true. So this is this is the current position. Latingly knows how to use H file for her rooks. Now she's trying to double the rooks, probably, and just to you know, just to have these bishops here if white allows, then she will of course uh, get on this second rank. 
It's a very smart move, and the move order matters too. Obviously, this e5 bishop is guarding the h2 square, but she will only take on e5, and she's ready to go to h2 after doubling her rook. So she's in no hurry taking. And if white takes on f6, I think she will take back with the pawn to strengthen the structure in the center. The e5 square 2 will no longer be a weakness. Absolutely, absolutely. And then he can start to roll the pawns and activate a little bit of this bishop. This bishop is not the happiest piece on the, on the no, board. that's a French bishop. That is a very <laughs> sad waiting, French bishop. Waiting for his turn to shine. shine. Let's see what Eva will come up with because she's spending quite some time. She's going down to two minutes. Again, the time control for these games is five minutes with one second increment. So that one second increment is not that much to count on. She plays bishop to f4. Our evaluation bar didn't like that much the idea, but it wasn't an easy uh, position to improve. She could have perhaps brought the rook to e2 or e3 to also try to double on the e5, but it's messy when you know that black will double on the h5 and you might need your rook on h1 to trade those rooks. Mm. I thought I thought that uh, the bar dropped because bishop d4, c takes d4, and rook c2 check. Oh, that could be the reason, Katy. I think you mm. are right. That's that even though black was focusing on the h file after bishop f4, it was possible to use the c file. Very nice. Yeah. At this position, black can try and uh, black can. Uh, can uh, can push e5, uh, pawn t uh, bishop takes, bishop takes, rook takes, and then still, you know, come on second rank and be very annoying. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I love the, the info sheet behind um, the, the rest of the scene that you can see. It's just above Katty's head. And it's a fun fact. Mm -hmm. I thought when I researched these two ladies, I was expecting finding many, many games. They are both from China. They might have played in the Chinese League, Chinese Championship, also international tournaments. They never faced each other at over-the-board events. Uh, Lei Tingjie is, I believe, three years younger than, than Yifan, and still, it's just so fascinating that they never I ever played. Wanna. I was so desperate to find the games. I tried in jazz bits. I tried in the internet everywhere. It's like, come on. Me too. Me it's too. I couldn't read my gap. eyes. I thought, there's something wrong with my database? And then I found one game, and that one game is from December's Women's Summit, organized by chess.com, Online event, Rapid Chess. I believe that the one game they played against each other, Yifan won the Women's Summit, but Lei Tingjie won the game. So that's an mm -hmm. interesting one that Lei Tingjie had the black pieces. It was a very long end game and she managed to win, but Yifan won the tournament. Yeah, okay, that makes actually sense because how you found... Uh, was not playing. Uh, was not playing in the national team, as I remember. Even even though she was still active player, she was playing and competing top grandmasters, uh, but not competing uh, in the women's tournament, as I remember. Yeah, like and also Olympia she wouldn't then. compete at the 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 Chinese women's uh, yeah. championship. She competed in the overall championship of China. Yeah. Yeah, that might be a reason. That might be a reason. Another reason might be that Lei Tingli just, you know, she just uh, got into the national team some years ago. And maybe it was exact time when Hao Yufan stopped playing chess, stopped being active uh, chess player. Ketty, you read the future because the info just above your head right now is saying the exact same. Did you write these statements, this, this fun <laughs> fact <laughs> for the show? How do you know it? You read the future. <laughs> it must have been a thought bubble. I agree. That's why it's above you. I, and I have me. no idea about that. <laughs> <laughs> well done. In terms of the position, Black has made quite some progress because that rook now has got to c4 and captured the d4 pawn. It's a pawn up for Black after bishop c7. Yifan is trying to grab the a5 pawn to equalize in terms of material, but Black pieces are now so active with the rook on d3. The b3 pawn was hanging to pressure on f3. I think Lei Tingjie has a really good chance to make a comeback in this game. Absolutely. Uh, also, some some of uh, how you find smooths are a little bit out of her style. She likes to control and dominate the board. That's what we have seen so far. And the moment uh, she misses some uh, some some moves, I think she also feels a little bit uh, distracted, and it's just not comfortable for her because 
um, you know, when it's your style not to allow your opponent to have many chances, and then you see, oh, there is one chance. Oh, I blundered that bishop d4. That might be also destruction for her. Yeah, it is really tough when you miss a move and then it might lead to even more mistakes. After rook h4, the threat was rook takes g4, so she stops it with king to g3, but now g5 supports the rook. Bishop d2 to try to grab the pawn, but I think black can defend it with king to f6 or king to g6. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And here we have king on e1, attacks on e6 uh, pawn, but can I play bishop d5, just guard the o, what I'm doing, <laughs> guard the e6 pawn and also, you know, try to get something on the queen side. I like bishop d5 and then I looked at the computer, which is always bigger brain than us. The computer wants mm -hmm. to sacrifice a bishop on g5. It might not be the case here, but in some lines you can take on g5 to then give a check on e5. But then both rooks are hanging. I don't know what the computer wants. It's just sometimes uh -huh. too much, <laughs> too much big brain for me. Uh -huh. King comes on f6 and this and this. I guess with bishop d5, if you play bishop d5, then after king f6, ah, you can take on d5 too. And then the rooks are again hanging. So it's a mess, but it didn't happen. So we are not in that line. Mm -hmm. Good. Good not to have <laughs> such, a, such a blunder. Yeah. No, it, this is here. better. King f6 is a very solid, safe move. And now bishop d5, there are no longer tactical attempts from white. So black is slowly but surely improving her position. Yeah, I like this uh, this this move, uh, rook h8. She she knows that the rook already made here some 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 job at least just freak the uh, king, white king, and now she's trying to come on ASC file on mm -hmm. open file. Yeah, we have another very important fact mm. above your head. Get it. Oh, what happened when I was trying to re uh, read the fact that Hu Yifan is indeed a four-time Women's World Champion. She won her very first World Championship at the age of 16, and she's making a miraculous comeback in an endgame that seemed very much a disadvantage for her. She's not up on exchange. Beautiful. She sacrifices like the rook. I like this rook d5 here, it just kills all the counterplay of the black. That's her, she likes to dominate and she is But is it enough? Is it enough to win? Because it felt like maybe she didn't need to do it just <gasps> yet. I like the idea, but it might not be enough to win. This may be our first draw of the oh, match wow. from a game that was an advantage for letting Jia, then you find turn the tables and uh, now it's just yeah. a draw. Yeah, they keep going, they keep going, but this this game is very easy draw, like no matter where the king is, even in this position when we have knights, a uh, knight's pawn, you just have to get the king here and rook also on the back rank and it's just draw, there's no way to, no way to win um, or lose that, that position, but did you, did, you see, did you see the face of how you found she was really surprised that the, the position was not winning after really game. I yeah. missed that moment I was focused on letting Jess profile picture which is a battery that's <laughs> running very low so hopefully she's not playing from a laptop that's not being charged if that's what her profile picture refers to in a joking way but this is the first point even if it's half a point this is the first point that letting Jia mm -hmm. scores in this match she had a really good chance to win the game it, in the heat of the time pressure she mm -hmm. made a mistake then Yifan was winning and overall it ended in a draw now we are over to the d4 openings Katty, that you were hoping mm. for my dear but I want to call your attention to how you fans uh impressions like uh of what I have seen so far, she's very focused. She's not showing too much emotions, but look at her now. She's trying to, to cover her uh, face. I, I even think that maybe she is still considering that position because it was so close to win. Mm -hmm. And she did not manage, it was so fast and she had no time to even analyze the game and just to know, was it winning or not? So, and what I've seen so far in her matches, like when she gives the half point or the full point to the opponent, then she changes a little bit of her um, body language. Like mm -hmm. she is yeah. trying, she's showing more with, with the hands and with the face as well. I agree with you that she must be disappointed that 
in the end, she didn't manage to win. Um, obviously, she's aware that with the pawn down endgame, she had a very difficult and possibly losing position that then she turned the tables and she could still be very well considering what you mentioned and how was that line winning. Let's see if she can recover from this partially the disappointing outcome of the previous game psychology is a huge part of chess yeah. and in a match like this even more so because there is no break indeed in between the games absolutely we have 36 more minutes to go so we still have a bunch of games coming now they switch to d4 so it's latingly who started who, who decided to switch a little bit of the of the character of the match and here we have is it it's catalan bishop over here uh, but it seems like a black decided to to go to the um, to the line where black uh, captures on uh, on c4 and accepts this uh, sacrifice. But in return, uh, white has very very strong uh, center. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, this queen on d8 usually has a problem in Catalan uh, position because. Queen sort of can't find any any better square because um, then Rook also can come and start to attack on uh, D and C files. So Knight comes to E5. I think this is really dream position for all the Catalan players <laughs> with White. Uh, and um, what Black has here is uh, before Knight square for the Knight, which guards which is guarded by the pawn. Uh, um, uh, but here it's a little bit unpleasant to somehow coordinate the pieces because queen has not perfect square as I mentioned earlier and there are some breakthroughs here with, with d5 it takes e5 or just to push e5 and starts to um, bring knight on e4 there is a rook c1 also knight b5 ideas uh, and here in Catalan system um, Black's main, main, main uh, uh, plan is to push c5. So far, this plan is stopped. It is stopped indeed because of the d5. h6 was the choice of who you found the question whether this bishop will be traded for the f6 knight or will need to retreat. The choice of letting Jay's bishop to e3. Uh, mm -hmm. She earned her grandmaster title, as we can see, in the third bubble above Ketty in 2017. That was just a year after Yifan won her fourth World Chess Championship. So it's a bit different timeline. And that's one of the explanations, one of the main reasons why these two haven't faced each other ever in over the board chess. Although she was so young when she got Grandmaster title. The youngest woman ever to earn the Grandmaster title, Hui Fan earned it at the age of wow. 14. Yeah, these girls are brilliant. These girls are brilliant. Yeah, this is a so hard to achieve the title, hardest <laughs> title to achieve in chess Grandmaster. Because now it's not only the rating, like 2,500, right? Uh, you um, you have to uh, you have to also compete e among very very strong opponents and to get the norms and the achievements. Yeah, it's very so difficult. Very difficult. So Ifan is the youngest a woman player ever, youngest lady to achieve the Grandmaster title. And we now have a new youngest Grandmaster in the world ever. Sergei Karyakin's record was also broken just a day or two ago, which is obviously breaking news in the chess world because Karyakin held that record for so long. Mm -hmm. He was 12 and he got the record and uh, now he's a bit older than 12. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> 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 so, oh, Anna, I was reading. I was reading some of the comments, and um, in the in the interview, in the interview, our youngest star said that he's training for twelve hours per day. And there were like many comments about this. Like some of the people were blaming parents for that, and some of the people were like saying that this is it's not real. So, what do you think about this? And also, what our chat thinks? Like twelve hours of training—that's that's a pure dedication to chess. That is hundred percent dedication. But I wouldn't blame the parents if if the boy likes it. If this is what he wants to do, it's amazing that he found his passion. He found his calling. He possibly wants to win the overall world chess championship. So, not just collecting the GM title, but I'm sure that his overall is. Uh, inspiration could be the world champion maybe Vishenand is a role model maybe the current world champion is a role model or both but I think as long as you enjoy what you're doing mm -hmm. and it's not someone else in this case not the parents deciding mm -hmm. for you it's great it's great that he loves what he's doing and he's so good at it 
Yeah, and you know, it's really ups- this comment. I I wrote, I wrote I wrote I read many comments, but this comment really upset me. And it stayed in my head because I know that for many many chess players, parents are our hope, our managers, our coaches, our finance, and and also sponsors. So they put they put some part of their lives to to our career. So it's not cool to blame many parents to you know to help Indeed. the kids to be successful. Yeah, the, the parents, the family background is so important in, in all of these cases, at chess and at other sports or any field where you need to excel from an early age, uh, the support of your family is one of the main factors. Absolutely. Okay, about this position, and I see this queen still see your struggles, like cannot, can't find the shadow. <laughs> and, but like managed to, to push C5. I know this looks a little bit scary here for black because uh, we have a pin uh, here on C file, but for the moment, for the moment, black can, can guarantee that um, she's the one who captures on C5 the latest. Uh, and she, Maybe she doesn't feel that this is the safer, but uh, it's very hard to play against uh, against this bishop. The Catalan bishop sometimes is extremely strong. Um, and for the moment, a white can can choose between queen takes or pawn, pawn takes. I think I think queen takes was <laughs> was my decision just to have um, have uh, the uh, attack on b6 uh, pawn. But why she? took this most probably because she wants to get some access on c6 for the bishop or maybe if pawns are traded then rook will have really comfortable seat on c6 yeah it's true the queen takes b5 seemed very natural too but this makes sense for the bishop coming in the future to c6 i agree with you that the pair of bishops here the catalan bishop supported by this f4 bishop is very strong mm -hmm. for white because um, how will you stop them? How can you try to trade them? You can't play bishop d6. The knight can't really attack or block these bishops at the moment. Knight c5 is a good attempt to be able to keep the queen on, on c8 and, and just try to block on the dark squares with bishop d6 now as well, offering a trade. Absolutely, here in this move, uh, c4 to c4 is, is a sacrifice because the pawn can be captured with two pieces, uh, but black could not play this position anymore. Like white, white can simply play d6 and start to, to win uh, with any plan. So that's why I hear how you find decided to um, uh, to sacrifice this pawn for activity. And um, she's hoping to have uh, knight versus light square bishop. If uh, if White decides to trade the uh, um, uh, the dark square bishops, let's see how this will continue now without the dark square bishops. Indeed, this d5 pawn being a pass pawn, but the d6 square is occupied by the black queen and king f8 to bring the king closer to the action and try to play rook e7 perhaps at some point to bring the rook to the e file. Now rook e8 is also Ooh. possible, but it looks a bit. <laughs> Suspicious when your king wanders back to the middle of the board after queen g4, the g7 pawn is hanging, and queen c8 check is a threat as well. I think that's a very attractive check to give. Then queen c6 probably next, mm -hmm. or yeah. oh, and after king uh, king to e7, queen g8. I don't think there's a way for black to stop all the threats. F5 to yeah, prevent for queen f7. Queen, queen g7 wins the rook. Oh no, this yeah. is the first loss. First win by letting Jia to make the score closer. It was a two-point lead for Hui Fan, but now uh, the margin is becoming uh, smaller. And also the psychological side of chess uh, will this affect Hui Fan? We shall know soon. We're gonna take a short break, and then when we are back, we will show you the key moments of this previous game before we head over to the rest of the five-minute blitz portion. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to the broadcast of the semifinals of the 2021 Women's Speech Chess Championship hosted by Chess.com and FIDE. Get and I are here to cover the remaining part of the 5 plus 1 portion of the blitz between Huifan and Lei Tingjie. Katie, what do you think of the match so far and the result at the moment? I think we're having what we wanted to see. Lots of dramas over here. And we cannot predict anything yet because these girls are doing it so hard for us to predict anything. Uh, but it's worth to mention that it was really good time for a break for Hoyo Fan because she was she was losing a little bit, you know, after the draw. She started to be a little bit worried and was very much visible. And then she lost the mm, last game. So it was a good time for a break, right? You were so right about that moment when you mentioned uh, if we noticed her facial expression and how she reacted after the third game's draw, which was a game where she she was down a, a pawn. It was a disadvantage in an end game that probably was losing for her, the position. Then she turned the tables and was suddenly winning, but she missed it. She didn't manage to convert and it did affect her. It meant that this fourth game wasn't the best of her uh, play in the match. Now we shall see if this few minute break manages to bring the top performance you found back to our match because she started with two points of lead, two win out of two games. Absolutely. And I love to see uh, letting play <laughs> her face. And she's, she's eating something. She has some snacks. It's important to hydrate. It's important to also have maybe oh, yeah. a bit of nuts, chocolate, banana. I wonder what these players have as their main snacks. Those are usually oh. the regular mm. Grandmaster snacks. But again, we have one of these Berlin endgames. This has been the theme of the match every time we have Yifan with the white pieces I think Gia goes for the Berlin and this endgame is now for the third time that we see this. At the same time, always a bit of a different variation. This is, again, not exactly the same that they played earlier. And it makes sense because Le did get a good enough position in the second game that they played in the this endgame. So Yifan changed it up a little bit. Now heading with uh, Rook D2, the other Rook can go to D1 as well, doubling Rooks on the D file. Yeah, and also on the other hand, Lei Tingli uh, is very confident in her moves and also her her look uh, face uh, camera says so that she's she's relaxed, she's not nervous, she's focused on the on the chess and she enjoys as well. And look at these very strong pawns uh, targeting the white uh, white king. These pawns actually might not checkmate white king, but will get a lot of. Um, space on the king side which is very good uh, and useful for the for these two guys over here it's true that after g4 h takes g4 or bishop takes g4 both are an option but h takes g4 i thought was the more appealing one because it opens up the h5 for the rook so you have a rook that hasn't been moved and at the same time it's an active piece we shall see what's going to happen with the queen side development that's still yet to be decided where you place the c8 bishop and to bring the a8 rook into the game but so far i think letting Jie has managed to equalize i think white's a slight position advantage, which is oftentimes the case in this Berlin endgame, is not that big of a deal anymore. I think if if I had to pick, I would prefer this position from Black's perspective already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, me too. And Lady English seems to be a landlord of H5 in these positions. Like she just owns this file and she knows how trademark. to use this. Indeed. Yes. Um, in the in the first position in the first game, uh, she developed her bishop on e six, and it was under knight f four and knight e six. Not exactly in this mm -hmm. position, but uh, the idea was like this. What do you think she where she will develop the light square bishop in this uh, structure? I think here she might consider bishop to f5 now that she has access to that square 2 to put pressure on the c2 pawn. After knight d4, I don't recommend bishop f5 any longer. That would be a big blunder. So will it be simply bishop to d7? And I almost forgot again. You cannot cancel. Yeah. <laughs> I almost actually did this error to cancel, but no. No, we do this, uh, this sign here. No. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> You can't. A6. Okay, I know what she wants. She wants to push C5 and she wants to get uh, B5 under the control. 
So maybe she wants to push b5, b6 and develop the bishop on b7. There is not light square bishop to control all this uh, maneuvering. So mm -hmm. it's true that that's another option to develop the bishop to the long diagonal. Uh, a6 is very important to guard the b5 square before you push c5 and allow knight to b5. And now it's over to Yifan to decide. She goes for e6 again. This is a a theme that she has used earlier, this pawn sacrifice. She's giving up the pawn so that it frees up her pieces. The bishop can go to f4 and she might be able to collect the c7 pawn in the future. Yeah, she loves to loves to play e6, trade the e6 pawn to c. Um, I, I know that some, some some people might ask like why she does does that this e4 on is central pawn and those pawns are, are weak, right? They're double, but uh, in fact, also, e6 pawn will be um, will be a target. If white managed just to regroup the rooks on e file, also knight already hitting there, um, this can be a real target here. Very true that the e6 pawn is a big weakness too. So it's up a pawn for black at the moment, but it's not easy to hold on to the pawn. And at the same time, by sacrificing the pawn on e6, the position is opening up in a case where black is still undeveloped. The queen side still yet to be developed. Plus the king cannot castle, so it will have to go perhaps to f7 in some of those cases if the e6 pawn is in trouble, but not an easy situation for the king now with the open fires. Yeah, I love this bishop d6 move. Um, that stops white to capture c7 pawn. And if, if white captures this bishop back, then we have c takes d and all these pawns will be very good looking in the center. Yeah, that's a good idea to try to straighten the pawn structure. I don't think that Yifan will take, but she's taking her time to decide how to react to bishop d6. Knight to b3, oh. she's offering the f4 bishop because if it's taken, rook d8 check, picks up the a j rook. It's a beautiful tactical pattern. Of course, bishop takes f4 is not forced, but now the d6 bishop is attacked by three of white's pieces. Yeah, this is brilliant idea. This is brilliant idea. I wonder what can he Black do been... after this? How do you yeah. prevent it? But how you fun has this tactical vision and feeling and, you know, she, she, she just feels this kind of moves. That's amazing. This is a beautiful tactical pattern because of the age age rook. That's a loose piece. Jen was also highlighting yesterday these opportunities when it comes to a loose piece being the target of a tactical pattern like this, rook d8 check. So you cannot move the bishop away from d6 and you can't guard it with enough pieces. What will black do? This is troublesome. Yeah, if black pushes uh, or pony five white can take take uh, and now this bishop guards the rook over here but the bishop is also at the same file as the king so white might start with rookie two rookie one if necessary uh, and capture the bishop back on e5 yeah bishop takes e5 even though it's guarding aj you are right now the e5 pin would win the piece back so there does not seem to be a way for letting Jie to keep material and it's not just about white winning the pawn back but if you win the pawn back with these double rooks on the d5 then black will still be in trouble because of the lack of development and the king stuck on e8 a reminder mm -hmm. that this was a berlin endgame so the king has already moved to d8 and then went back to e8 yeah, this king stops the rook to come to the queen side uh, from from h file, and also the bishop is not the best piece here. For for the moment, it's so hard to to find a way how to develop this and how to bring the rook um, on d8. If black will not take care on this, then it means that she's playing without a rook against these very very strong uh, pieces here on d file. Very true. Bishop e7 was her choice to guard the da square and now rook to h5, but it feels like it's going to be such a tough situation for her on the queen side. The c8 bishop cannot develop because of the rooks on the d5. And if you cannot move the bishop, the a8 rook is out of the game too. It's two inactive pieces, two virtual pieces down almost. Yeah, absolutely. c4 somehow down to the bar. Uh, brings it a bar down. Maybe b5 is an idea. b5 just um, uh, provocates the pawn. And if you capture, I might capture with a, uh, a pawn and just to open up the a file for the rook. 
Yeah, B5 indeed has been played by Lei Tingjie. She's trying to take this chance. Maybe C4 wasn't the most precise. It wasn't that simple, though, to keep improving White's position. It's a very nice position, but it didn't feel like there was anything concrete. I still mm -hmm. think that Yifan is doing extremely well after Knight A5. The C6 pawn is hanging. Yeah. And again, you cannot develop the bishop. Yeah, and this bishop is impossible to come here. I was just looking at some moves. Bishop b4 was also very unpleasant because rook d8 comes uh, with a check. And black captured the pawn on c4. And oh, wow, what's what about these islands? Who owns these islands? <laughs> <laughs> Many islands indeed. After rook a7, it seems there's a tactical pattern now that the c8 bishop is a loose piece. So rook <gasps> d8 check immediately played by Yifan, sacrificing the rook for two pieces. So it's going to be first the dark squared bishop, and then after rook takes c8, she'll collect the c8 bishop too. Guarding c7, very important at the end. And the rook is here still locked on moon a7, forever locked. Now if king d7, it feels like white is in trouble mm -hmm. partially because both pieces are hanging, but there was knight b6 check, mm -hmm. guarding the rook and pushing the king back. Absolutely. Uh, rook b7 here, uh, she's trying to find some counterplay. Maybe bishop a5 here just to, just to you know, control the whole board from e5. Uh, and that is so hard here to play with uh, with white. Oh, she goes with bishop e6. I like that too. If the bishop then could make it to c5, maybe b4, bishop c5. Mm -hmm. It is just so difficult to face these two very active minor pieces. And black also doesn't have a pawn on top of the rook. Usually it's a rook and a pawn that's equal to two minor pieces in value. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And here, how you find is going uh, going to start uh, collecting pawns with g4 pawn. So it actually makes sense to capture this and then to play f3 at some point just to have uh, the path for the king. It is extremely hard to play against two pieces because um, 96, 96 was losing a piece. 96 spot, and but... rook g7. There were a couple yeah. of ways to win the piece, but also moving the bishop back and everything else was still a tactical yeah. pattern in the air. Hu Yifan wins another game, meaning that now the advantage will be two points again. But Lei Tingjie already made a comeback from this difficult situation. Let's see if she can do it again, because this match uh, is still very far from the end. We have 16 minutes and a half left from the first portion, which is five minutes with one second increment. And then there will be an even faster blitz, three plus one. And the final 25 minutes is bullet chess, one plus one. Yeah, and the most exciting part for, for everybody, for everyone. And also I think for the players, it's um, it's quite challenging to, to play bullet game, uh, but it's not bullet. They still have this one second increment, which can be, um, you know, can be, it can, it can be a big deal in some positions. True, at least the uh, flagging is not that much of an issue with the one second increment. We have seen players obviously losing on time, but it's not as frequent as if it was no increment at all in bullet chess. We have one of these Sheveningham variations again on the board, the Sicilian defense, a very traditional approach by white castles, queen side, pushes pawns on the king side, oftentimes black castles, king side, and tries to attack on the queen side, opposite side castling as we have seen it before. Yeah, and let's hope that letting Lee now <laughs> sacrifice this knight d5 earlier <laughs> and better. <laughs> it, was a, it was a good idea, I think. It was a chaotic position, knight d5. Maybe not yet, but sometimes is a thematic sacrifice, as Katie pointed out earlier. Knight c5 is an option for black, or simply develop the bishop with bishop to b7, bring the rook to c8. Now white is ahead with the pawn pushes. White can make it to h5 next move, and then even g6 oftentimes is the right way to push. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very powerful uh, idea for, for whites just to open up, sacrifice a pawn and open up the h and g file and leave the king just alone there. Uh, here, uh, from the previous position here, white changed a little bit. In the previous position, she played f4 first before g5. And now, 
I think it's more clear for her that she has to be the first. She has to be the first who who starts to or who starts uh, some pawn pushes. That's why she did not play uh, f4 immediately. True, she's she she's switching uh, to the agent g pawns instead of spending time on pushing the f pawn. It this does allow knight to e5, but that knight was gonna have to c4 anyway. Usually it's knight c6, knight a5 from e5 to you are usually just trying to get your knight to this really cool location, the c4 square, after which if there's a trade, black could take back with the pawn and open up the b file. Exactly, open up the b-file and if Blair, if white decides to ignore this knight and um, just don't react then white uh, knight might be really really naughty and start to be a sacrifice here on b2 or on a3 and after d5 also bishop comes here in the game. There are several ideas here for black as well. Oh, Kitty, the, the bar has jumped. I didn't mean yeah. to cut you off, but bishop d7 seems to be a mistake. There can be tactics here. h6, okay. and then after, F4 now if you push then. g6, f4, because of queen g7 checkmate, the knight cannot move away from e5. Black is losing a piece. Absolutely. That's, that, that's it. That's it, I guess. If black here is plays g6, which looks very normal move, after f4, Knight c4 is not 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 the option, or knight anywhere is not an option because there we have a checkmate. So if black can't push g6, that means that white will capture this pawn with a tempo over here, and um, h7 will be the next pawn. Yeah, Yifan obviously realizes that g6 wasn't possible because of f4. She pushes f6 to try to hold on. The, this long diagonal after h takes g7 is going to be so difficult though with the h file opening up the king is already so exposed the black king is very vulnerable while the white king is nowhere near being attacked yeah yeah sometimes we're not capturing this uh this kind of pawns big because they are closing the files so there will be no no check that's why she did not capture the pawn with the king uh so here we have bishop f6 maybe She's trying, if I'm trying to hold this very difficult position, white is up a pawn, but it's not really the pawn up that matters. She could also take on d6, but you're, oh, I was going to say you're not aiming for an endgame. She she prefers the endgame. I thought she was going to continue with the attack against the king. The endgame mm -hmm. too is, it, yeah, how to resist the two pawn up endgame. Yeah. It will still be one pawn up if the g7 pawn is taken. Yeah, and you know, your opponent has no, no counter plays in the endgame in this kind of end game here the uh queen side attack is not dangerous anymore for white and all black can do is just to try to hold the position for for a draw so uh, white's logic might be to go to the end game where there is only two results like technically it's two results anything can happen anything including yeah you're right there's happen. not much of a risk factor two possible results usually you're trying to win worst case scenario draw this of course is a very promising end game extra pawn very active pieces the rooks doubled on the d5 the threat is f4 to push the knight away from the defense of the d7 bishop and win more material yeah i think black still can go f4 if uh, a bishop captures oh no oh no 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 <laughs> yeah the rook has been attacked <laughs> since no, but no, no. i think now with rook g1 check uh, first of all, things yeah is asking, will you go back with the bishop to g7? Will you play rook g7? So black has to take a decision. If king to a8, it starts looking scary on the long diagonal in the future with bishop d4. Yeah, absolutely. So here we have uh, rook g7 and rook from d6 comes on d1 and guards the uh, friend over here. And still white's idea is to push f4. And just get more space in the in the uh, center. Let's see how things here will continue. Again, the match situation is that Yifan is leading with two points, but this game again could slow down Yifan a little bit, and also psychologically, these turning moments are difficult in a match where you're playing for three hours. And yes, at the moment you have the lead, but. If your confidence starts going a little lower, 
and you are low on time as well because Yifan has been the slower player so far. We only have nine and a half minutes left of this five plus one segment. The next one will be three minute plus one second. The final is one minute plus one second. So we are cutting down the time control to shorter and shorter. I think Yifan will need to speed up because in every single game, Lei Tingjie is usually the one with the time advantage. Yeah, and that makes us, all of us, to think that Lei Ting Li will going to have uh, a slightly advantage um, when it comes to one, one plus one or three plus one segments. I agree with you. And this game too is still, of course, an advantage for her with the extra bone. I do think Yifan is fighting very well here to have chances to hold the time situation is Extremely low for her, 15 seconds now with only a one second increment. She takes on f5. It's such a scary position. You need to calculate always bishop h5 check as well. And where will your king go? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and these bishops controls the half of the board and also rook helps, um, helps over g file. On the piece that is not playing so far, and we didn't mention this this night over here, um, maybe White White has to find some role for this knight as well. King to d6, but it looks a bit fishy now. Will there be anything on the d5 in the future? Um, um, yeah, what's wrong with rook e6, actually? <laughs> it might be a lot simpler than what I was trying to do with rook d1 and discover checks. <laughs> Wait, what is going on? Oh, once the king goes to c7, both bishops are hanging. So maybe for now, black is not losing material, but it looks so suspicious, this piece setup. You are right, the h6 bishop, the d5. Bishop f2 was the choice of, of Lei Tingjie. And now after king c7, the bishop check on g3. The bar is showing almost completely uh, demolishing advantage for white. Will there be a checkmate pattern with these pair of bishops attacking the king? Both have obviously a pair of bishops, but the g3 and g4 bishops are just more, shooting more at this poor bishops. king. Yeah, it's it's so <laughs> difficult when both of them are attacking the king and all squares are guarded by the bishops. Yeah, absolutely, and the pawn is already on f f6, so next move might be f7 and this pawn will be a half of the queen. Very, very close to, to be a queen. Knight f6, knight h7 is the easiest idea here. Uh, and I don't... Oh, there's a bishop g5. Okay, there's a bishop g5. I, I like your idea, this. though, because maybe it's still mm -hmm. possible with the... Uh, yeah, it is check. possible because we have this check here, right? Uh, just intermediate move, which mm -hmm. uh, gets out of the pin. And then it's impossible to save... Um, yeah, you find run out of time, but the position was already losing, as you mentioned, Katy, with that knight jump and knight h7. Well played by Lei Tingjie, who now has added an extra point to the overall score, meaning that Yifan is still leading, but the gap is a lot smaller. It's a one point advantage, and the psychological edge is now on Lei Tingjie's side, obviously. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And here we have once again this position. I was thinking maybe it's it's time for how you find to, to switch uh, from Sicilian to some, somewhere else because Latingly seems to be really uh, well prepared in that line. And sometimes, you know, um, also for myself, I don't like to go with the sharp lines when I feel that I'm not uh, well prepared with my openings hmm. and I need to go a little bit slow and then in the middle of the tournament I can start to play a little bit more aggressive so um, well we can also consider this uh, yeah, the middle part of the uh, of the match because we have five last minute in this segment True, this could be the final game of the 5 plus 1 portion and then the time control will get shorter and shorter. Again, whenever Yifan has the white pieces, we have this theme that they are playing the Berlin endgame, always a bit of a different version. They are twisting it here and there. The overall strategy is the usual one. Black has the pair of bishops, but a worse pawn structure with the doubled pawns. It's more damaged and white has more space and more activity for the pieces. So far, Lei Tingjie has done well, except for the first game. I think the, the games that followed, she managed to, to equalize in this end game. And she, I think, is doing well in this game too. Again, it's the question, where will the bishop from c8 go? Which diagonal you choose? And can you expand on the queen side with the pawns in the future? Mm -hmm. And the first uh, first uh, uh, 
uh, a task that Black is having right now is E6. E6, how you find loves to play E6, no matter what, is a sacrifice, is a trade. She likes to give this pawn and creative weaknesses and then to play or for these weaknesses. Can we explain something like C, uh, B3, C4? I was looking at the two because this bishop on D5 looks good, but it's not a stable square of the B3, C4. What can black do to, to run away? You can't push C5 and use the long diagonal. I think there's too much going on on the D5 with this loose piece after knight F5. Mm -hmm. Knight F5 or knight B5, that's winning on the spot material. Yeah. So C5 is not nice. good. Bishop B4 could be an option. And then the rook at least has to maybe leave the D5, rook D3. There's bishop E4 in the future. So perhaps bishop B4, rook to E2. I like this position for Yifan. And I think this is her style. This is where she excels so much. Not, not that obviously she wouldn't be good at the sharper lines, but when you are not that active as a player, when you don't have that much time to train, uh, I think it's easier to go for this type of positions because her overall knowledge obviously is, is incredible. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't need to be that sharp for these positions. Um, it's her end game skills, her technique that shines in these positions. Yeah, absolutely. Here we have Bishop E4 on the board. We expect Ricky to, unless she sees something that we don't, like knight B5, maybe it's still there. Um, but very likely she will not go for some uh, sharp, sharp uh, alliance here or sacrifices. Although she's taking some time and more time she thinks. <laughs> you think she's considering a sacrifice? <laughs> she can choose between rook to d3 and rook e2. That's already a big decision too. If you keep the rooks on the d5 or move it to e2, ideally you would want to keep the rooks doubled on the d5, but that steps into bishop e4. And black doesn't have to play bishop e4 immediately. Black can wait for white to push c4, then move the bishop away with a tempo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see if she picks the d3 or e2 squares, or is there something that we miss? Another sacrifice that she can come up with? She needs to decide. At the at least, she now has more time than letting Jie, because the time management the, in previous games was worse for Yifan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. She was like, okay, <laughs> I have to make a move. <laughs> let's let's play Ricky too. Let's play Ricky too. Ricky too actually helps her favorite d6 move here but this is the first time this is the first time when the rook from a8 managed to develop on d8 this is the first time and you it's an important an one yes <laughs> indeed the rook is in the game it's not easy to develop the queen side in these end games will we see e6 again because that's a move i'm sure yifan is calculating mm -hmm. E6 is not even a pawn sacrifice here in a way that the C7 pawn is hanging and you can take back on E6. So, oh, <laughs> oh Anna, you see what might might be here if pawn takes. Oh wait, wait, I got too excited. Then might be C4, and the oh. bishop is dropped here. That would be beautiful. You're right. Yeah. You can trap the bishop because if you push C4 first, the bishop can still go to E6. If you push E6 first. And pawn takes e6, bish, uh, bishop takes e6 is the other line, but if pawn takes c4, wins the piece. Yeah, yeah. To be honest, here after e6, bishop e6 is the is the move that white sh uh, should be considered, and maybe for that reason should not play e6. Well, uh, she goes instead uh, uh, knight on f5. Is this knight make some unpleasant checks on g7? No. Oh, okay, maybe bishop comes on g5. Those could be the idea. ideas in, indeed. And this will be the final game in the 5 plus 1 segment. Uh, we are down to our final 24 seconds of this time control, meaning that the next portion will be 3 plus 1, even faster blitz chess. B5 and the bar is screaming at us, but I think it's more of a positional mistake. Or mm. is there something concrete? Well, she wants to stop this C4, right? That's <gasps> why she played that. Wait, but maybe the computer's is point is that you didn't stop it because after c4, those two bishops on the fourth rank will be both loose and there could be tactical <gasps> patterns. So Yifan goes for it. Yifan pushes c4. Okay, okay. 
I think this so this is takes, an idea. Take, mm -hmm. Bishop takes. We capture the rook, and then after rook e4, we're getting one of these bishops, right? I think that is the pattern indeed. Although in that position there's bishop d3 because the knight on f5-2 is hanging. I think Yifan has better calculated than me for sure. I just saw the loose pieces on the fourth rank. Well, you still, of course, need to be very precise after bishop takes c4 was the right move order. I do think you need to include the trade oh, or oh, knight g7. One? Yeah, and there's also knight g7 with bishop g5. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So there are a couple of ways uh, in which it's suspicious, Black's position, to yeah. say the least. She takes on d8, very natural. Oh, bishop d3 is met by rook d4, check. Yeah. Rook, I, rook b2, and then to get this rook here. Yeah. But I think there, there are many ways which wins this, uh, this. And now rook d4. So this was the idea that if you take on b4, Black takes on f5, but rook d4 picks up the d3 bishop and Yifan is winning. Yeah. There was no way out of it, so bishop d3 isn't a blunder in, a, in the sense that both bishops were in trouble on the fourth rank. I don't know if bishop e6 could have... Maybe... Actually, maybe bishop e6 was going to be a better attempt to attack the knight from there, but it's too late for Le Ting to change her mind. The bishop is gone from the board, and now it's a piece up for Yifan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bishop e6, at least it's safer there. The poor pawn guards that bishop. And yeah. here we have a resignation. It's not point to continue and to play this position, of course. And it's more important for them to take some break, take some fresh air, or some, some, I don't know, juice, whatever energy. Or maybe even look at some line and check out maybe they are, they want to change something in their opening. Yeah, I think they, they definitely deserve this break. We're going to take a few minutes break. And when we are back, we will show you this final position because in the heat of that C4 tactical pawn push and what's going on, maybe there was still a defense for letting GI. We will show, show you that moment, that key moment from the game after a few minute break. And then the players are back too for the three plus one blitz.
Welcome back, everyone, to the broadcast of the Women's Speed Chess Championship. Before we head back to the semifinals, let me remind you that there's another championship coming up in November, the World Chess Championship between the reigning world champion, Magnus Carlsen, and his challenger, Janja Pamyashi. Chess.com has the exclusive rights to broadcast the cameras from the playing hall, so you can see the action up close and personal here on Twitch. So mark it in your calendar. More information to be announced soon for now. November, World Chess Championship, and it's going to be a big one. Absolutely. And if you can't make a trip to Dubai, this is the only way to, to access to the playing venue and check out the players. So I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to do this. <laughs> I think I will watch it from Twitch too. Twitch is my home now, so I will watch it with my community possibly. But also on YouTube, there will be coverage, obviously, as many platforms as possible. We will give you more information on that in the future as we are getting closer to the World Championship. But what we do know today is that this match of today, the semifinals between Hu Yifan and Lei Tingjie, is still quite a close one. Yifan has just won the final game of the five plus one, meaning that now her lead is two points. But every time she has this two point lead, usually Lei Tingjie makes a comeback and wins the next game. Can she do it again in the three plus one? So we are starting for the next 45 minutes. We will see three minute plus one second increment time control. And after that, bullet chess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we might see here some changes also in the openings uh, because when I, I'm sure that part of the preparation uh, uh, might be um, might be uh, uh, several different openings in different um, time control. And here we have here White changes it and she immediately goes with G4. This is more aggressive approach and, uh, you know, just immediately attacks the uh, king side. King is not castled yet, but here we have this G4 anyway. And it somehow is just an un unpleasant to, to play against pawn so active fun how do you feel anna when your opponent plays something very active like oh i would be terrified uh, but luckily it's not me playing the game the sicilian is too scary for me i prefer my bad bishop in the french defense everyone knows i'm a huge fan of this passive defense as others label it uh, but the sicilian is a lot more dynamic a lot more exciting oftentimes will lead to opposite side castling and we have seen this in the match White castles, queen side, black castles, king side, whose attack will be faster. We shall see in this game. They have been repeating the Sheveningen variation you found with the black pieces, but it's a bit of a different version again. So similar ideas, but not the exact same position. Exactly. Both players delays here the castle. Um, black side in some positions in this lane is actually to keep the king on e8 because that's even safer than on g uh, g8. That especially happens when white starts g4 g5 immediately. Uh, so this pawn uh, push um, force uh, forces black knights to get on the queen side, where actually she needs this piece for the attack. And now white is considering to castle. Uh, on the long side or the short side, maybe even. Um, but here, uh, white had to stop first. Knight coming on c4, because if white loses this bishop on e3, uh, the pawns e4, uh, the pushed pawns uh, might be even weaknesses there. Yes, now with the bishop on g2, there's no longer that bishop takes c4 usual idea. So b3 indeed stopped the knight jump. Uh, it also means now that the c5 is more vulnerable, though the c3 knight is guarded by this bishop on d4. But if in the right moment black could push e5, then that will be a certain issue where c3 and d4, those two minor pieces are all tangled up depending on each other's defense. So I wonder if black can find the right moment to push the e pawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, if Black's move here, Black would push if uh, Black would not mind to push e5 because take take and if Bishop takes on b6 here, or oh, Queen can capture this Bishop back and uh, have really really nice control of, on this long diagonal, or just to uh, capture on c3 and attack on c2 pawn and long castle here. Oh my God, 
Ting- Lei Tingli has a uh, very strong nerves. <laughs> yeah, I like though that now she's guarding the knight with the king too. So king to be t- taking over the role of the bishop in case E5 is pushed. Now the bishop can move. So, so suddenly it's not an issue that the C3 knight will be undermined. And here we have E5. E5 might be really powerful. And if it's cap- uh, followed by D5, it will. it could be even stronger. And here we have it. Here we, uh, I was not so sure about this five move, but here we have it. Usually this is, uh, um, this d5 opens up the bishop and we might see some sacrifices here. We might also see uh, some b4 after b- uh, pawn takes, then bishop comes and pins the knight. Um, we shall yeah, see, it's very moves. brave obviously pushing e5 and d5 straight away. And there can be tactical motives. The bishop takes a3 check as well. That will deflect the king from the defense of the c3 knight. Or b4, if black could push b4, a takes b4, bishop b4, obviously that pain would be extremely strong. Yeah. Okay, white has white has this very strong and powerful uh, weapon against all of this. Uh, after d6, um, the main problem is that the b7 bishop will be hanging in the end. Let's see, it's such a rich position. The black king is still in the middle of the board, but there are all sorts of tactics around the white king as well. Yifan is taking her time for a reason. There's so much to calculate. Is it the bishop sacrifice? Is it b4? Is it something else that she should play first? Uh, she takes on c3, so this move order, now bishop <laughs> takes a3. Same idea, but it's forcing the queen trade. So she wanted to play this endgame instead of having her king exposed in the middle of the board. Makes sense, makes perfect sense. This is brilliant. Uh, this mm-hmm. is brilliant. And uh, wow, I was so surprised to see something like this because it's uh, such an unnatural, right? Uh, king is there, queen is there, and they both guard the knight and you just anyway capture it. Wow. And look at this rook now, so active on h uh, h2 on the uh, second rank, uh, and a rook is trying to annoy the light square bishop. Uh, white can, black can also push the h pawn and try to you know push it as far as fo- possible. Yeah, this rook has captured both the c pawn and now the h pawn as well. The black king is still in the middle of the board, and you can't castle because the d7 knight needs the help of the king. Maybe this is this is the case that after the trade on d7, this king will be okay in the center of the board now that it's an end game. And finally, the rook from a8 can be brought into the game. Yeah, here we have this position. King e8, it makes sense, not only seven, because that there might be some checks, uh, but uh, king e8 is safer now. Maybe rook c2. Oh, no, no, no. Rook c2 is impossible. Then rook comes on d8, right? So white's idea is to play rook, uh, bishop b6 and rook d8. And here we have it. But this is not good. Maybe because Oh, of the b4. white king seems like it could get into trouble after b4, oh, king a4. Oh, no. Yeah, this is almost checkmate that white king has barely any squares to go to. If rook a8, the only move is bishop a7. And oh, a4 wow. now, a4 now, she wants to open up the file for the rook as well. Makes perfect sense, of course, now that this a7 bishop was stuck and pinned. King b6 steps out of the pin. Yifan is down to eight seconds. She has to be very precise still, but this is a winning chance, obviously, for her. Yeah, absolutely. The king is super active here, so this might decide here something. And actually white black has here two two pawns extra. So white is going to get one, but still uh, I think even one pawn is enough to win that end game. Indeed, but two is even better, of course, with rook d4. You mm-hmm. can hold on to the b4 pawn. And for that reason, Lei Tingjie resigns. This is now a three-point lead for Yifan. Can Lei Tingjie make a comeback? Lei has been the faster player. So we think that the three plus one, and especially the one plus one time control, might favor her. The shorter the time control, probably the better for her. But now it's already a bigger gap, and she needs to turn the tables. 
Absolutely. She needs that. It was a very smart decision from her side to to resign there. That's the position, actually, we don't resign in the weekend game. But um, she knows that it's going to be a longer game. Why to waste any any second for that when she has to she has to play as much games as possible to to get some points out of there? Very true. We see this, how the overall timer is part of the match. You guys see that we have 36 minutes left of the three plus one. If you are trailing, if you have a couple of points of disadvantage, you want to make it happen in a way that you have more and more games as a chance for a comeback. And if you're leading in the match, you might not resign even in completely lost positions because time is running, time is ticking, and it will allow you to have only less games left from the match. So it's very much part of the strategy. Absolutely. Also, this is all in chess. Anything can happen, like a mouse can can be not the best friend of you and we might see some mouse lives too but this is not a time you cannot really uh, look for this you can't count on these things it's time to move on and it's time to we have seen several times lately coming back and getting really close to how you find and to be honest if we have if we have uh, in the end of this segment only one point um uh, difference in the uh, between these two players in the bullet segment anything can happen anything yeah happen. bullet will be crazy i agree with you that i think even one minute for sure uh, one minute sorry at one point uh, but maybe even if it's two three or four yeah. points who knows what can happen in bullet just because it's so many games that you get to play in 25 minutes we have seen players making comebacks from three or even four points of disadvantage it might happen but letting gia i don't think she wants to get to the bullet by not scoring so she will try her very best of course she still has over half an hour to make a comeback in the three plus one portion Absolutely. And it also um, matters how, how, what is your mood, like how confident you feel uh, before, the, uh, before the start of the next segment. So that's why, that's why either she has to like um, get closer to how you fun or she has to win the last game. It also boosts your mood, right? When you win the last game, you kind of think that you are, you are the one who, who runs the match. Yeah, you can start a winning streak. The psychological side of these matches, obviously, is extremely important too. Now we see one of these Berlin endgames that has been the theme, as we mentioned, every time you found plays with the white pieces, we get to see this Berlin endgame. Bit of a different version every time, but the overall strategy being so similar when it comes to the the main theme, the pair of bishops for black, but better pawn structure for white and more space. This rook on h5 at the moment is a bit out of the game. It was trying to come into the game through the fifth rank, but you can't push g4 here just yet. If you could push g4 and trade that g4 for the e pawn, that could be a way to activate the rook. Yeah, absolutely. g4 uh, might be at some point uh, black's idea here. Um... Yeah, we might see this because otherwise, how the rook really comes to the to the center? Like it's so hard to to get. Uh, it's not easy to get here, right? So this can be a shortcut. It could be a shortcut, and I think that's what Leiting J is trying to make happen. At the same time, you need to find the right moment for that break because. Um, for now, she just plays bishop to b4 to activate the bishop further. Yifan comes back to e2 with the knight. If g4 now, I think after probably h takes g4, rook takes e5. Even though you manage to activate the rook, it's not ideal because the h4 pawn will be weak after the h5 opens up. So rook h1 would be a way to attack the h4 pawn. It might not be the right moment to push g4 for that reason. Yeah, but what was that rook h8? Because now white simply captured the pawn on g5 and she can capture the second one as well mm-hmm. is it sacrifice ah no <gasps> it was a blunder i guess it happened so quickly i was still analyzing in my head those pushes uh yeah. if we can show it real quick what happened at the end of that game because it was a blunder by Le Ting Jie. uh yeah, she let's, let's she, see this um she just from... went back to age eight with the rook in a position where the rook wasn't attacked. So she may have miscalculated that there's no follow-up. Did she count on bishop c5 check? But king f1 was played and 
its two phones up for white, she resigned for the reason of what Katie mentioned earlier, the overall timer matters, of course, for the match. She didn't want to yeah. continue playing a losing endgame when she needs to win the next game. Yeah, absolutely. I thought I thought that she overlooked she overlooked this. Uh, Bishop takes h h three, g takes h three, and there's not a checkmate because knight guards here this g one square. But anyway, after bishop takes here on h three, there is a checkmate here. So maybe maybe not sure uh, that it was uh, bishop h three was the move she considered earlier some moves earlier but it did not work so that's why we had very very quick um, resignation and that means we are back with the situation where leiting gia has the white pieces again it's a sheveningen she will try to attack again on the king side maybe in this game she's not castling queen side at the moment she's playing again with the <laughs> yes stop doing that I love it though. It's so dynamic and she has done well in these type of positions. It's tough when you are on a losing streak and so far you found advantage is a very convincing four point lead in the match, but with half an hour in this blitz portion and then another 25 minutes of bullet chess, anything can still happen. She just needs to start turning the tables Again, of course, much easier said than done, but I'm sure that she still has high hopes and will do everything she can. Now, h5 going for it on the king side. If black castles king side, that's a, that's a brave move. It's a brave move to castle into it. At the same time, you might need to if you want to bring the AJ rook into the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think she will not castle now in this game either. Um, and actually, that's how it works in Sicily. And sometimes you're keeping this... Uh, this king in the center and then in the end game is even better because it's closer to to the um, central squares mm -hmm. trade on h6 but i think now both rook takes and g takes h6 makes sense for activating the rook this age rook will come to g8 and uh, finally it feels like it's the white king that could be more exposed through that open g file as well as the fact that black has the semi-open c5, the queen on b6 is very well positioned to, to control crucial squares. I think that Yifan is in control in this game. Something has gone wrong for Lei Tingjie. In the previous game, she castled usually earlier, castled queenside and then attacked. Maybe she went for a bit too aggressive of a, a choice for this one. Mm -hmm. Expanding, oh, bishop takes e4. Wait a second. What so happens? the c4 knight, the c4 knight was attacked. She didn't want to go back to a5. That was the only square for the knight. So instead of that, bishop takes e4. I don't think it was necessary to sacrifice, but Yifan goes for it. Is it bishop f6, the follow up idea with the peace sacrifice? Uh -huh. Brave, very brave. But then. I'm so confused right now. I'm so confused because after this, even Rook B1, like what is, what is, aha, uh -huh, maybe her idea is to, is to capture this and somehow access on G1? I think so. Could be, could be the idea. It's, it's a very bold choice, obviously, going for bishop takes e4, but Yifan has the confidence that here, because of the king being still in the middle of the board, both kings are, but the white king is the one that's being targeted. Uh, she goes for this peace sacrifice. I'm still just so puzzled and at the same time amazed. I didn't expect this bishop takes e4. And even though black is down a piece, our bar next to the board you guys can see that bar on the left side is showing that black is better with a piece down that says a lot about the compensation for the material it can be also some positional sacrifice in this structure when the king is in the center that you know you can allow yourself to have such a tr treats uh, to sacrifice a piece and to have uh, extremely strong attack Let's see what's going to happen now with the bishop coming to the long diagonal. Queen a5 check as well. The king uh, can't really hide. So bishop d2 to shield the king. But now the pawn on a3 is captured too. This is now already three pawns for black. 
for the piece. So equal material in a sense that three pawns are the same value as one minor piece. Of course, it also depends on the placement of the pawns. It will depend on how fast can those pawns run, the A-pass pawn. But at the moment, it's still the main story about the kings, the safety of the kings. And will this even king be okay now? Uh, C2 is a vulnerable spot that's now protected by the E3 knight. I think this is just so sharp and suddenly the black king two is being attacked after F5. The F5 will open up, F takes E6 now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and bar starts to go up and up. This, no, bar is really shaky. Bar is a bit confused, just like us. I think <laughs> at this stage, so it doesn't confused. matter what the evaluation of the computer is because both players are down to their final seconds. There's only a one second increment. The position is chaotic. Mm -hmm. Piece up for white, but the kings are extremely vulnerable. The white king still is more exposed than the black one. At the same time, there can be tactics now. Uh, apparently, white's position is getting better and better, but will late Tingia find it with no time on the clock? Ooh. Queen trade. Okay, Queen at trade. least we avoided the checkmates. Yeah, queen trade should be really good for white here. White has less things to worry. There will be not checkmate ideas anymore uh, or some some like unpleasant uh, checks because all these squares are controlled and we have less and less pieces on the board. So knight is four, two, three pawns. But these pawns are somehow not very much connected and they are not uh, defending each other. And here we had... Uh, very nice uh, sacrifice on d6, and White managed to uh, manage to get another pawn. This this endgame now with the trade of the bishops obviously is getting even better and better for White. Black's hope is this a pass pawn. So Yifan is trying to bring the rook to b2 to undermine the blockading piece on a2. She still has practical chances, obviously, mm -hmm. because of the, the low time that both players have. It is still a position that White has to convert. You don't just get your opponent resign just because the, the bar is telling the, the evaluation being very much in White's favor. So I think we will see Yifan trying her best to eliminate the pawns because if you get rid of both White pawns, White doesn't have enough material to win the game. Uh, whoa, that... That ended that so suddenly. <laughs> Can we show the final moves because it ended so suddenly, Katie? Yes. So Black was considering to take here on h5, but after rook a5, uh, the rook will be gone. So uh, yeah, I think it's also so hard to continue here and to play this because everything is hanging and hard to come back here in this position. The tactical refutation indeed. Rook takes h5, met by rook a5 check. And for that reason, Yifan resigned. She could have continued the game if she wanted to use more of the overall timer of the match. We still have 23 minutes, 23 and a half minutes left of the three plus one. So it's interesting that she didn't want the game to go longer and spend much more time, but much more. A minute, maybe she, she could have spent another minute or so of the overall timer. Instead, she prefers to get the new game and try to win even more games. I like the attitude. I like that she doesn't want to just spend the time of the overall match. You guys can see three plus one up there and 23 minutes left. Of course, with a three point lead, the less games, the closer she is to win the match. But I think she wants to win the match with an even bigger score at mm -hmm. this stage. Absolutely, absolutely. She wants to she wants to get as much points as possible for the final minutes of the final segment because she'll be, you know, a little bit more relaxed and she will enjoy more to play chess rather than be, you know, to be uh, looking and counting the points and the time there. So she wants to have some advantage then in order to enjoy a little bit of the chess too. And the bullet will be crazy. So obviously the bigger advantage you have after the five plus one and three plus one, the better it is heading toward the most chaotic segment of all. The final 25 minutes of the match will be bullet chess. Those of you, by the way, joining us from the front page of Twitch, welcome to our coverage of the 2021 Women's Speed Chess Championship. This is the semifinals between two 
of the strongest female players in the world. Next to my camera, we have Hu Yifan, four-time Women's World Chess Champion and the youngest woman player ever to achieve the Grandmaster title, also the youngest to ever win a World Championship. She was only 16 when she won the Women's World Chess Championship. Her opponent, though is also an extremely strong and rising star player, Lei Tingjie from China. The two haven't faced each other and over the board tournaments because Yifan recently hasn't been very active while Lei has achieved the Grandmaster title in 2017. So it's all going up for Lei Tingjie. They haven't met at an over the board tournament yet, but now they are here to fight for the final spot in the finals. Tomorrow is the last match of the Women's Speed Championship. $20,000 is the first prize and only one of these ladies can make it to the final to play for that prize yeah absolutely absolutely that's that what is very important right now it's just to get in the finals and when you are in the finals there is so there is a huge chance to get the main prize or even the second place gets a lot of a lot of money so why not why not talking about latingly she is one of few um ladies who achieved the um, highest chess title and as I know as I know according to the statistics there are like 18 female chess players who who achieved this this title it was 17 last time I was checking but now we have uh, another girl uh, Jean Sayab de Malik who managed to get her a 2500 rating and she already had three norms of Grandmaster so in total, we have 18 girls who are holding the highest titles and many of them are competing in this tournament. So such a such a stars here we are having. Absolutely. Not an easy feat to achieve the highest chess title, the Grandmaster title. As you mentioned, only a few ladies have it in the world. So to be among the best of the best, Lei Tingjie is number three in the world by Blitz rating. And this event, the Speeches Championship, as the name says, is a very fast paced version of chess. She still has a chance to make a comeback, but she needs to start turning the tables because at the moment Yifan is leading with three points. Yeah. Yeah. But everything can be happened. Anything is possible. We have seen, we have seen a lot of things happening in chess. Uh, so we're keeping all the eyes and hopes for these two players. Um, and what is the situation in this, in this current position? It is a more solid situation than what we have seen before. It was a different version of the Rui Lopez. We have seen the Berlin, but no Berlin endgames this time. D3 was played by Yifan to, to keep the position more complex in a way that there are more pieces on the board. Not that the Berlin endgame is not complex enough, but it's a different complexity when you manage to keep most of the pieces on the board. And this maneuvering position where we have seen the Knights going back and forth, trying to get to key squares the current position is a lot simpler after the trade of rooks the white knight is heading toward e3 to make it to f5 but i think as soon as you play knight e3 the bishop will trade that knight before you can land on e5 we can before you can land on f5 the f5 square mm -hmm. is the one i would love to somehow teleport the knight to yeah, that's I think what Bishop is here for. And here we have it. Here we have it. This Bishop was waiting for the Knight to to walk into E3 square. And now Knight jumps on G4. We might see some uh, some open uh, H file in the future. Uh, if somehow Black managed that, that could be really nice to get um, the attack on also on H file. But for the moment, Knight is hanging. So don't listen to me don't do that it's gonna be really scary <laughs> really bad and here in the uh in the end game when we have queen and knight versus bishop and knight uh, many players would, would say that queen and knight is really good combination of the pieces because they are uh very they have a harmony and they cover all the possible squares um and in this current situation, we also have a little bit unpleasant uh, pawn structure for the light square bishop, right? We always try not to not to uh, fix the pawns at the same square as a bishop is, because the bishop uh, might be a little bit limited. 
very important indeed about the color of the squares on which the structure is fixed. And here, Black still is trying with the pin on the C5, and we shall see whether she can find a grip on the position. It's a very solid structure. I think the most likely outcome is a draw, but the knight is a tricky piece. Both players are down to their final 10 seconds. This pawn on B2 has been won, but it seems it was a mistake, yet Yifan doesn't have time to calculate, makes a semi-mistake as a response. There was a way to exploit the position, or is there still a way? It seems Ooh. there still is a way. Bishop D5 cuts the connection between Beautiful. the queen and the knight, and now Bishop C6 wins the piece. Oh, beautiful combination. Beautiful combination. Wow, that is brilliant. Uh, technique of the end game. Um, I really thought that like uh, white lose the B pop put oh, B2 pawn. <laughs> yeah, it felt <laughs> like Lightings like, oh, yeah was the one trying to win, but I think at that rate when she when she took on B2, she forgot about the counter chances of Yifan, which Yifan immediately used and managed to win another game. Now it's a four point lead for Yifan. Can mm -hmm. Lei Tingjian make a comeback? 16 minutes left of the three plus one portion. And then we're going to have bullet chess, which is the craziest, fastest time control. So still everything is possible, but it's getting tougher and tougher, of course, for Lei Tingjian to, to start to make a comeback. Yeah, she's uh, she's doing very well at the opening. Then she has a uh, very good position in the in the uh, middle game, and then somehow there are little tricks that she's missing, and how you find is not missing. That's why she lost several games. She's in the end game with some very small, like uh, two or three moves um, uh, tactics, let's say. Uh, so that's why, that's why it's so, so important for everyone at any level to practice uh, tactics and the puzzles daily as much as possible uh, and just to have, um, you know, just to be always in shape and to have the tactical motives and skills. Yeah, this indeed, it's really very good. important. Uh, at the same time, Yifan said that she doesn't have much time for training anymore. And yet she's, she's still so sharp. I wish mm -hmm. I could do this, have a full-time job at the university. I haven't trained much recently. And yet here I am <laughs> qualifying to the final easily. She played in the Champions Tour event against the world champion in the rest of the field. Of course, it's a very strong field. But she held her own. She she played some really nice games, even like this, that she hasn't trained that much recently. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but I don't know, actually, like we were talking about this. There are some speculations and there are some thoughts like maybe she says that she's not training, but she's still training like two, three oh, hours. And day. she's preparing and she for a comeback, us. maybe. Yes. Maybe she's preparing for that. Oh, yeah, because in, in the interview, she 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 did not really give us the clear answer like no i have i have other plans but she I, I think she really wants to come back she really wants to come back and here we have she she's playing this tournament and um this week she also played another strong online event and then she will be uh playing um also in august so i think i, I think we have got we have her back I think at least partially she's back. And as she mentioned, maybe when the, when the global situation with the pandemic gets better and, and there will be more opportunities to travel, perhaps she mm -hmm. will want to come back to over the board chess as well. For yeah. now, we have online chess. Yes, and also from, uh, just remember from the interview, she said that that's also playing chess is not only only option for, for a person that can be another role as well. So that's interesting. That's interesting what she has in her mind and what's, what's her plans. For now, I think her plan is to keep crushing it because she's doing so well in this match. Her opponent, Lei Tsingjie, is world number three by blitz rating. She eliminated nine in the quarterfinals, Antonita Stefanova, former women's world champion. And yet, Yifan makes it look easy to win a match for now. Again, we are nowhere near the end. There's 13 minutes left, 12 and a half of this segment, and then 25 minutes of bullet chess but for now i feel like ifan is very convincing and it seems that if she continues like this she will be the opponent of harika Dronavali. again i don't want to jinx it i'm just saying what has happened so far yeah 
And also, I look at her like she's so focused the, uh, in this situation when she is leading with uh, with some points. She's very focused, and the moment there is something that she's missing, her her body structure changes, uh, and also her face changes. This is this is really nice to to see the character of the chess player. Indeed, and she's sensing that this position is not good for her. Now Yifan has to defend very precisely because Lei Tingjia is going for it with f6. Perhaps there were other alternatives too, but uh, here Lei Tingjia is trying to open up the position since the Black King is still in the middle of the board. Uh, maybe there were other even more aggressive choices. Now we see a queen trade, and yet even after the queen trade, 95 check, and his f7 pawn is in trouble. That's an issue because it will create an f6 pass pawn and there's an h pass pawn too. Mm -hmm. And now white uh, might come here knight g7 um, and push this pawn on, on uh, h7 or it's not even necessary to get this knight on uh, g7. Now she wants. Okay. I like it. I like the idea of knight g7. The two knights so strong. Yeah, okay, she also might think to come with the rook on g file, g8, g7, just to, uh, white needs to get rid of this rook, and then it will be a free pass for the pawn. Yeah, so here we have it's a rook. even saying mate in five now after rook g7, there's no way out for this black king after rook takes f7 and rook g1. Uh, this mm. is now a completely winning position for Lei Tingjia, and this is what she needs for the comeback. Actually, not even the other rook. You use this rook to free the knight and now double rooks. There were so many different ways in which you can go for the checkmate with knight g6 too, but I think she didn't even want Yifan to, to be able to sacrifice the rook for the knight, so she prefers this cleaner conversion, of course. Nice game by Lei Tingjia from a difficult tournament situation the match is heading in Yifan's way but this could be a comeback this could mean a turn of the tables yeah absolutely it's not it's not given any any easy time lettingly is not given any easy time to how you find maybe we can take a look uh at the previous game because it was very nice um checkmate uh before the things are getting hit it here let's get the sure. board uh back oh yeah Okay, yeah. <laughs> so at this point, at this point here, uh, when the rook got, got on g7, here black had not any practical chances or whatever chances to survive because we have here beautiful uh, checkmate. And latingly just made this everything in second without even thinking because there are so many ideas. There are some nice checks and um, from and here as seven. Well. But she made this in a second. This is how fast she sees this move. Yeah. There's so many mates here. Rook g8 is checkmate. Rook f7. Knight g7 is checkmate. If the rook goes back to aj to guard g8, then rook, then uh, you also have knight g6, rook e7 checkmate. So way too many patterns. The king could not survive. Yeah. That was a beautiful one. All right. We have uh, this game in progress. And somehow they, 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 uh, they changed the opening. Uh, this is not something that I remember uh, from the from the very very beginning, and now they start to play this this type of this variation of Rui Lopez. Yes, it was again what happened in the previous game that no longer Yifan is going for the Berlin end game, but she pushes d3 to guard the e4 pawn against the Berlin variation of the Rui Lopez. So it is again the situation when there are more pieces left in the board, but a more symmetrical pawn structure at the same time. Knight, this knight maneuver is a very mm -hmm. typical one heading toward the f5 square. Yeah, and at this point, there's not a bishop on this diagonal which can capture the knight. So knight safely got on e3. I like these knight maneuvers a lot. At the same time, if, if you play knight f5, usually uh, black is ready to face that move with the capture bishop takes f5. That's why it was important for black to move the d7 knight away and open the diagonal for the bishop. Yeah, and also what she's doing, she's maneuvering the knight as well from d7. Now on g6, hitting the bishop, and when bishop comes on uh, g3, most probably, uh, she will have a curve, this knight f4. Um, yeah, she, she just played, she just yeah, played this. Yeah, both this knights game. were heading toward that square. Now after the trade, though, white shouldn't do the same. If you take on f4, 
there's no knight f5 anymore because of the pin on the e file. Yeah, that will lose the, the uh, queen. So instead, knight c4 happened and b5, knight d2. Seems like the latest moves here um, tend to be really good for black. Black activated the bishop and got really nice uh, pin over here. Black has a pair of bishop. Uh, also, the con uh, queen structure pawns looks way much better for black rather than um, these uh, pawns in here. So, uh, can we can we consider that black has here a little bit uh, like better position? I think so. I certainly like Black's position a lot with the more space, good grip on the center as well. I see our viewers on Twitch discussing the Connect 4. We have a beautiful Connect 3 here with the Black Pawns. It's an important theme, obviously. <laughs> and shout out to our viewers on YouTube as well. Thank you so much for tuning in, for watching the semifinals of the Women's Features Championship with us. This is the final six minutes of the 3 plus 1 portion. And then the final stage will be Bullet. One plus one, one minute, one second increment. Yeah, these last two games um, turns to be the uh, really good, good for Lighting Lee. She's showing her true, true vibes, who she really is. And uh, we are getting very close to the final segment, one plus one. I'm sure, I'm sure that we are going to see a really uh, beautiful fight over here. Can be also dramatic. We can accept that to you, <laughs> no problem. We, it can be also a bit dramatic. Um, I think we are rooting for a very close match. As as yeah. much as we have fans of either Ifan or Leng Tingjie in the chat, but we are all rooting for a very exciting match that will have ups and downs. Bullet chess especially will bring even more of those moments when the Ivahio Shimbar is dancing with the position changing constantly. This is a great position for Leng Tingjie and it's a good chance for her to somehow win again and even though she is still down three points in the match as soon as you start winning that boosts your confidence it mm -hmm. could start a winning uh, a winning streak for you in a match so i think she has all the chances now in this game and also in the overall match thanks to starting to win in a row the previous game and this one yeah absolutely and also losing some games in a row it affects uh anyone anyone so you have these two effects first you feel very confident second your opponent feels more and more distracted and more worried about the current events right so that's yeah. why it is important to have two three uh wins of strike in a row and then you can you can you know, win the rest Let's see if Ifan can, if can hold this. It's a pawn down for white, but what's good for white for the fighting chances is that it's opposite colored bishops. Mm -hmm. And I was gonna ask, I was gonna add though that that is good usually in end games though, because as long as there are attacking chances, the issue with opposite colored bishops is that the bishop of Ifan cannot defend on dark squares. And now after f3 with the idea of queen h2 checkmate patterns, this is becoming extremely sharp. And I think Ifan will not get the end game she wants. She cannot trade the queens. The king is getting into trouble. Oh, wow. And after h4, there's queen g4, queen, F, uh, queen h3, uh, path for the queen and white king has um has troubles cannot really survive um in this fight i believe that it's going to be really hard to she's, survive she's trying to run to the queen's side um which is definitely the one attempt that she had to go for but after bishop takes f2 now the d3 rook is hanging. It was a beautiful pattern. King f2 would have been met with queen g2 check. So Lei Tingjie wins yet another game. And suddenly the margin is not as big as it was. Yifan used to lead with four points. Now, after two wins, Lei Tingjie has managed to make that gap only two points with still three minutes to go. This could be the final three plus one. And then we will have bullet chess for 25 minutes. Exactly, and here we have a Catalan defense once again, where black uh, quick over uh, black comes bishop b4 check, 
uh, and it might look a little bit unnatural if you don't play Catalan and then you take the bishop back on d6, you are losing some moves. But this is really good because bishop on d2 usually uh, feels really, really bad. It covers the d file. Sometimes d4 pawn is hanging and white has to anyway move this bishop from d2. That's why they played really, really fast here. But this is not the uh, standard uh, Catalan uh, defense that we have seen. This is something they know. <laughs> it is a sideline they indeed. <laughs> they, <laughs> they seem to know they what do. they are doing with this temporary pawn sacrifice on d5 white, the, white uh, is still behind in development so you gain a pawn but it gives some time for black to take the initiative since black has already castled mm -hmm. there can be tactical patterns with the loose bishop on d5 i think she's considering to whether to move the bishop away right now from d6 to attack the bishop and then the d4 pawn is hanging as well so a couple of options here for Yifan, uh, bishop e5 is her choice. So after d takes e5, she'll take the bishop on d5. Bishop takes f7 is an option too, to grab a pawn before taking on e5. Uh, but again, the white king is still in the middle of the board. So I think this is a really complex position where black does have uh, the upper hand when it comes to the initiative. Will it be enough for two pawns is the question. Yeah, uh, there will be two pawns, but uh, light squares of white will be really um, weak. And also the king has a little bit difficulties here to castle on time. Uh, after knight f3, we might see bishop g4 or bishop h3 even just to stop in white 2 from castling. I love this move, bishop h3. Also aims to come on g2 and capture this knight. But what uh, she's doing here, she's just, you know, pressing here on d e5 and if white uh, managed to um, castle here in this position uh, maybe she just wants to get first e5 on and then to play once again opposite color of bishop and in this case the, uh, there is weaknesses in uh, white's position on the light squares. Indeed, and right now you can go bishop h3 to highlight those weaknesses on the light squares. There's no fianchetto bishop on g2 for white. So this knight from f3 cannot abandon that f3 square because of the checkmate on g2. It is pinned in that tactical pattern. It is still two pawns up for late Tingji, but the position is very sharp and Yifan's pieces are extremely active. Yes, and here we see zero, zero, zero. So that means that this is surely the last game in this segment before we go to the uh, one to one. And here is exactly what we're talking about. If uh, how you find loses the game, it's gonna be three loses in a row. So that's that's not the best option for her. Uh, and also for Leiting Lee, if she loses the the, uh, the game here, that might be a little bit like losing a hoop, like, oh, I had a nice, nice try here and I lost it, I, I blow it. So now this is very important. And after my speech, I think draw is the best result for our cause. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for for the score to look a bit prettier for the full point. In any case, though, it is the final three plus one game and then we will head to the bullet portion. This game does count to those of you who are asking it counts, but there will be no more blitz games. That's simply what the overall timer says. And after bishop e6, it is the question where the queen goes. Can the b7 pawn be taken? Because that's a free pawn, but there could be tactical patterns. Rook b8, the queen has only the a6 square to go to. Yeah, that's that's true. Then queen can make on d3. I think we should not chase the queen. Queen is so far. And here we have this beautiful sacrifice. And white bar Ooh. is not dropping down. No, the that's evaluation bar down. is not impressed. I would be impressed because the light squares are all there for black. You are threatening bishop h3, queen g2 checkmate. But if bishop h3, there's queen d5 check trading mm. the queens, unfortunately for Yifan. Yes, that's, that's maybe what what uh, a white black misses here uh queen b5 was really a beautiful move it also might you know aim to come here on the king side and try to get on g2 and you know act a little bit like a bishop for for a moment to guard these light squares um and seems like it's too much of the material for white 
King h8 makes sense because now bishop h3 is a threat with checkmate on g2. It would still be met with queen d5, but at least it's no longer a check. I think Yifan had a really dynamic game here where she was inspired to sacrifice a pawn or two, but it didn't yeah. work in the end, especially this final exchange sacrifice. This so white is, is up. Ghana. Yeah, white is up now. Rook. Yes. What a winning streak for Lei Tingjie, who was down four points in this match. And with this game, she could make that margin only one point with the bullet to start after this game. 25 minutes of bullet chess, and she was the faster player in the match. So I think this match is still wide open. Lei Tingjie wins a third game in a row. Yeah, and her rating, her chess com rating also increased from 26 to 27. <laughs> So. Not bad, not, <laughs> not bad. bad. We will yes. show you guys the, the key moments of this final Blitz game and then start the bullet portion after a short break. So don't go anywhere. Key moments of the previous game as well as the final segment of the match, 25 minutes of bullet chess starting soon.
Welcome back, everyone, to our coverage of the Women's Speed Chess Championship. Uh, we also have, obviously, for you, the Junior Speed Chess Championship underway. The next match will be on July the 4th, and the top junior players in the world are competing for a total prize fund of 35 thousand dollars make sure to tune in on july the 4th for the next match and in the meantime kathy we also have a very exciting match with the final phase about to start it's bullet chess now between hui fan and Lei ting jie and the difference is only a one point lead hui fan used to lead midway through the blitz she had a four point lead now it's only one point and Lei ting jie was the faster player during the match what's gonna happen that's actually what we were like predicting, not predicting, but we were saying that what happens if there is only one point difference and then we got on the time at that moment to the uh, bullet segment and we're going to see right now. Uh, because they started, Anna, we wanted to show uh, the previous game of What's, what's but they wanted to start we? the bullets. I think we will not have the time because bullet yes. is such a fast-paced time control. Just on a side note, that letting Jia defended very precisely in a game where Yifan sacrificed two pawns and then even an exchange, but Yifan, uh, Yifan's attack couldn't be executed fully due to the precise defense of Lei Tingjie, meaning a third win for Lei Tingjie. Now she's back in the match and she was the faster player in this game. Both players are still above a minute. There's a one second increment. One minute plus one second is the time control. Let's see what's going to happen with this knight maneuver toward F4, a, a theme, of course, in these kind of structures. Are the knights. <laughs> There's no knight takes h3 just yet because the knight is guarded on f3 by the other knight too. But that is something that I'm sure that Lei Tingji is looking at, a potential sacrifice in the future. Yeah, if knight stops uh, supporting the other, other friend over here, maybe uh, black will immediately capture on h3 with a check and, uh, you know, just ruin the pawn structure on the king side and also win the uh, pawn. Um, so what has here the center with these pawns, uh, but somehow it doesn't really show that because of the center, white has here uh, advantage. It doesn't show, and I think partially that's the semi-open f5 for black that gives compensation and all sorts of tactical patterns in the air, oftentimes with the sacrifice on h3 or g2 in the right moment. It's not yet the moment because that f3 knight is well guarded by the d2 knight and the queen on e3. E5 was pushed and now D5 keeping the center closed. Yes, that uh, that gives white a chance to have a, to have a target here, C pawn. Uh, so we might see some doubles, uh, rook dub, um, double rooks here on C file. And meanwhile, King H2, I think King H2 wants to just get rid of this knight, a, knight H3 idea forever and free the knights to minor ring somewhere on the queen side. I like this pressure that Yifan is building up on the C5, targeting the C7 pawn, and now G3 chasing the knight back from F4. Very nice how she's expanding, improving her pieces step by step. And it's a much needed comeback after a three game loss streak. She lost three games in a row. And that break, I think, was good for stopping the bleeding and just starting from a blank page in the bullet phase. Yeah, absolutely. Here we have B5 maybe coming um, uh, just to guard the pawn and then with knight, knight c4, which attacks both of the pawns uh, here uh, on d6 and yeah, b6. And we have knight d4. Black is still aiming to have some, uh, have some play on the king side. Um, and now there is nothing to cover this file, although the queen and the rook guards f3 and f2 square perfectly well. And at the same time, the c6 pass pawn for white is a really strong one defended by the b5 pawn. I think Ifan has a great chance in this, a great chance in this end game, but they are so low on time. Anything can happen in the heat of the time pressure with only one second increment. Absolutely. Now Rook is hang uh, hanging on a3 uh, and white was guarding that. And meanwhile, black used that time and uh, she stepped down with the king. 
and there was oh, no Oh, suddenly it's winning for black, but it was missed. It happened so quickly. We will not be able to sh even show it. Uh, again, the chances are back with the attack on H3. Queen back to C7 now, and the dark square is threatening. It's a All back right. and forth. The bar is <laughs> dancing together with the blankies in the chat. Thank you everyone for being here, tuning in on Twitch and our YouTube. This is the semifinals between Hu Yifan and Lei Ting Jie. One point lead for Yifan, but this game is crazy. It is, it is. And here we have an extra rook for white. That's a full rook of for white. And she's trying to uh, trade any pieces left it on the board. And here we have uh, Hu Yifan coming back in the first game of one plus one segment so it's a two-point lead it was a much needed win for yifan after a three game loss streak that was the end of the blitz phase this game could have gone either way the previous bullet game and uh, late thing gia was winning on a couple of occasions then yifan was winning and back and forth but we still have 20 minutes left of the bullet portion so 20 minutes for late thing gia to make up for the two-point disadvantage yeah, and uh, just to make sure that uh, that our viewers know that uh, this bar, which is here visible for ev uh, everyone, for us, is not visible for the players. So, of course, that's also <laughs> FX. That's also FX. Like when you see the bar goes down, you know that oh, oh god, you have <laughs> I have a losing position. I did something wrong, and you are starting to worry about that bar. So, but the players don't have this one. Uh, and they don't have the bar <laughs> but i think you from without the bar too knows that something has gone wrong suddenly the position of white is winning again uh the king of black is too weak she couldn't take either of the pieces because there was gonna be a check on b3 if d takes e4 and it was gonna lead to checkmate it's one of the the prettiest checkmates when you sacrifice your queen on g8 uh mm -hmm. to deliver that very thematic checkmate. I'm sure many yeah, of you know that checkmate. Uh, Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> smaller checkmate. It didn't happen, but because it didn't happen, it means that now the bishop had time to come back to g2. Yes, black will take on e5, but it is a pawn up for white with pair of bishops attacking the center. A second pawn will be taken on d5 possibly, or just f5, f6 going for the attack on the king side. Now we need maybe queen, queen somewhere, queen on d2, just to try to come on g5, and also the rook on e5 is hanging. I really worry of uh, light, uh, f f of uh, back rank of white's, um, key, uh, white's position here, because if white is a little bit inaccurate, there might be some checkmates on the first rank. Indeed, and the bar keeps showing bigger and bigger advantage for white, but in bullet chess, it's not always that simple to find the killer move. Yeah, bishop takes d5. Uh, capturing with a check is the best option, of course, because you're capturing something and it's a check and you know your opponent's next move. Here we have rookie one. This is the check that you don't... And Lei Tingjie doesn't even take it. She's like, no, I'm just going to run my king to h3. It's safe there. And after queen g1 check, the king will hide on g4. There are a few more checks, but you can cover on f4 with the rook if there's rook e4 or queen e4. And this position is now a rook up for white with a discover check coming soon, leading to checkmate. As soon as you stop the checks, of course, white has to first run away with the king. Yes. So in the first first bullet game, we had also the position after after so many complications, then white had an extra rook on the board. And here is this exact situation when white has an extra rook. Still, there are several checks, but seems like white is uh, capable to cover all these checks. Indeed, after the rook went to d3, it was almost fully sheltered. The king now rook to d4. Still, there are a few more checks. King to b4, queen e7. He finds giving all the checks possible, obviously. But now after king a4, it was the end of the line. There was only one more check left on the board. Lei Tingjie wins her first bullet game. The first one in this phase was won by Yifan. Now Lei Tingjie. And that means, again, that the advantage of Yifan is only one point with 16 minutes to go. That is exactly what we wanted to see, what everybody wanted to see, unless you are a um, big fan of one of the players, which actually makes sense to support them. But for us, this is exactly what we want to see in every matches here in this tournament.
a very exciting close match. I'm again rooting for the tiebreaker too, because that means more chess for us. But that's mm-hmm. obviously from the spectator point of view, the players are here to qualify to the final. Again, what's at stake is this qualification spot to tomorrow's final match against Harika Dronavali. The first prize is $20,000. And only one of these amazingly strong ladies can make it. Unfortunately, this is how the knockout system works. The winner of today's match qualifies to the final. The loser of the match will not be able to fight for the 20k first first prize. Yes, and there is a little detail that these two players are are uh, invited players by Chesscom for a reason, as we can see. And they're making it until the finals. And as I remember, Harika Dronavali is the one who qualified for for this event. Indeed, Harika is already in the final. Even her pass to the final wasn't clear at all. Katarina Lana was leading during various points of the match, including one game away from the end when Harika managed to win the final bullet game to tie the score and then won in the tiebreaker. But it was an extremely close match. This could be another close match if Leiting GM manages to do well again with this king side initiative against Yifan's king. Yeah, absolutely. And when we have such a small uh, point difference here, just one lose might change the character at the moment because we don't have much of the time. We don't have much of the time. Uh, and you will not have too much of the chances. Like you can say, okay, maybe I will wait it later, but you can't hear. So uh, every point here, every half point here matters for this. Uh, two players and they are extremely focused extremely focused right now very focused the players of the f4 the knight makes it to f4 but there's a trade of rooks on f7 the h3 point uh, point uh, pawn uh, it's gonna be a point if you manage to take there with black but it's guarded by the white queen so it's not that easy to get through white's defense and the time is so low again these are the final seconds of the game Right, we had here the sacrifice of peace from Black uh, for very powerful uh, king side attack. And here uh, we have every piece is attacking the king, but they are not they are not too many, right? But what Oof, happens? Knight takes? takes. So the rook is hanging on g4, but the queen can take back. Now rook takes f2, more checks, but overall it's two pieces up for Yifan. Lighting G is trying her very best. She wins one of the pieces back, but I think unless she has perpetual check, this game go this game will go in Yifan's favor. Right. And she uh here she brings the knight on the uh, in the game, maybe she wants to bring it on h4, g6, and try to checkmate. A uh, black here tries to uh, trade the queens. That actually makes sense because the pawns are so far from each other, knight cannot control them, and black might manage to capture e5 uh, pawn. So that's why why that's why white uh, kept the queens on the board. And here we have a resignation. Yifan wins the game and now the lead is two points again. But we have seen Lei Tingjian making a comeback from a bigger disadvantage. It was four points of an advantage for Yifan earlier. And there's still 12 minutes, 12 and a half minutes left for this final bullet portion. Can Lei Tingjian upset the odds? Yifan is the favorite in this match, but Lei Tingjian is the more active player and number mm. three in the world by blitz rating. Yeah, absolutely. And Anna, you, you remember we were talking about the opening choices in the different segments, and here we have Benoni. This is something new. This is something new. Seems like how your fan had this uh, weapon prepared for the uh, time control one plus one. She is going c5 and having this very, very strong bishop here. This bishop, uh, we might we sometimes call this bishop monster bishop here. It is uh, a monster has- bishop. <laughs> It has a, a name for a reason, right? But it has here uh, the um, perfect square. You can see d5, perfect knight on c4 as well. Uh, very beautiful bishop also here on this file. Uh, but black also has some some 
some kind of play a play as well. To be honest, I don't I don't like this position for black at yeah, the moment. At I the think moment, it has gone wrong. It has gone wrong for Yifan, I believe, because the white structure in the center is scary. Such powerful mm. central pawns. So this is not an ideal position from the Benoni. Yifan may have gone wrong a couple of moves ago. The current position is favorable for white, and we just need to see whether Lighting Jack can convert it, because that's of course the question, especially with such low time control. At the same time, I have spotted Ms. Jen Shahade in the chat. Jen, hello. She was my co-host yesterday and will be here tomorrow for the final broadcast. Harry Kadronaval is already in the final, but only one of these two ladies of today fighting, either Huifan or Lighting Jia, one of them will make it to tomorrow's final clash for the $20,000 first prize. It's going to be, it's going to be amazing day. And I will be also joining you girls from the chat and be rooting, rooting the best player, whoever wins, whoever wins, I think deserves to be the winner of the event because it's, it's not a disease. Uh, this tournament is going for weeks already and it's so many, so many games, so many different uh, time controls and so many emotions. So all of them really deserve to be here. And well, they also deserve the um, good money that they are going to win. <laughs> $58,000 is the price fund of the Women's Features Championship hosted by Chess.com and Fida. Huge shout out, obviously, to both organizations for putting such a strong event together, Hui Fan is on her way to qualify to the final, but in this game, she's not doing well. So it may be the case that Lei Tingjie can still make a comeback. Let's see if she can convert this. The bar is obviously showing a huge advantage for wide, but there's not much time to think and consider where's the killer move, where's the win? Yeah, exactly. She's making some 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 threats here. And what Woo! happened? <laughs> what happened? I a bit of a dance. This. And now black is apparently doing better. All right. <laughs> these things happen. Now white is winning again. This is bullet chess. So these things are very normal. Um, the king is making it to C2 to hide from the checks of black. The black king can, yeah, cannot king hide, it seems. This king reminds me uh, goalkeepers who are getting into the fields at the last moment when they need the uh, every, every, every uh, players in the game to score. This this king was such a hero here on the board and survived so a true far. hero indeed. It's a rook off for Ting Jie, but now the overall match timer counts as well. So as much as it is a losing position for black, I think Yifan will keep this game going for longer because of the overall timer that's part of the strategy we see every match the player uh, that's leading obviously wants to to have it run for a little longer to have less games remaining but now with this win letting jay is getting closer to tying the score the lead is only one point you find used to lead with four points will this be a turnaround of events eight minutes left we're going to see this in eight minutes exactly, but uh, from the chess per player perspective, like when I had some, some advantage, some point advantage, and then reduce it to two points or one point, I feel really bad with that. And I'm thinking like, oh God, I had such a good uh, situation and it happens. We're all humans. We're all humans. And you might think it during even the running uh, game, um and this can might affect as well like um it's not easy time here for how you find it's not something that she plans for today for sure obviously she's trying to play her best chess but in such a fast paced time control bullet chess we, we did say letting Jia had the better time management during the match so in bullet time is even more of a factor and she's the more active player she's still competing actively mm -hmm. trains actively why for who you found she now has a full-time job at the university shout out to chess weave as well i've just spotted that fellow chess streamer chess weave is with us and he's asking if there will be a tiebreaker yes the danish that's a great question if this match is tied after the last bullet game there will be a mini match of four bullet games as a tiebreaker and if that's tied there will be a tiebreaker of the tiebreaker and even armageddon so it can go down the wire with all sorts of tiebreak systems but there will be more games for us to spectate and that is great 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I would not be sad if if something like this happens today. I would be happy to see it. Uh, and yeah, it clearly we're going in that direction. Actually, we're just going in that direction because we cannot predict here. Um, we cannot be sure of the result here. Anything might happen even at the last moment. And, you know, it will be the crucial for for any of these players. Very true, very true, Katie. In this game, I think Ivan is doing well, but it's a slight advantage with not much time on the clock. And just when I said it, did I jinx it? Did she miss this tactical pattern that now after taking twice on F2, the D3 rook is hanging. So white has met, white has unfortunately stepped into this tactical pattern and now black is in the driver's seat. Absolutely. Look at this active queen on E4 pinning the knight. Now maybe white, a black should bring the knight somehow into the game. She's keeping the queens on the board. She she knows that white king is weaker than uh, her a black king. So that's why she's <gasps> keeping the... What the thing G have with the pawn up blunders the knight. G4 trapped the knight on H5. So there was no way out of the situation. Now Yifan is winning again. Whew, oh, that wow. was that was unfortunately for Ting Jie a very unfortunate mistake for getting about the knight on h5, not having where to return. Yeah, she was so focused not to trade the queens that she just forgot about this queen d2, which controlled f4 square. And knight was such a uh, outplaced in the in the corner. That's that was a good example why we should not bring the knights in the corner. True. It was a great night earlier on F4, but on H5, it had no place to go. Now it's made in 11, according to the evaluation bar, but whether you fancy it or not, this pawn is promoting too, and it's a piece up for her. So now after Queen of 7 check and Knight takes G6, I think we'll see a resignation from Le Ting Jie. It is a two-point lead now for Yifan, but what a game this was. It could have gone either way. Le Ting Jie had the upper hand just before blundering G4. Two-point lead for Yifan with four minutes to go four and a half minutes yeah we can we can uh speculate like two more games including this one so one more game included then it's a must win situation for letting gia in both of these last games to tie the score can she do it yeah, but what a strange pawn structure here. I've not seen such a pawn structure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sicily. The little zigzag there, usually that F pawn is an F4. Yeah, it's sort of castle here. Maybe she wanted to play F4 and... No, no, no. Okay, maybe she wanted to play F4. It was uh, stopped on F3. Sometimes this happens in online chess. But look at these pawns here. Very beautiful pawns. They look really scary. They do look scary, and at the same time, Black is doing well too, I believe, with such active minor pieces. Let's see if there's a follow-up here for Yifan. She was putting a lot of pressure on this E4 central pawn. Can she continue uh, increasing the pressure, or is it about time to bring the rooks into the game? She can also try to expand further with A5, A4 on the queen side. E5 is a thematical move. Uh, you always need to find, obviously, the right moment to push in the center. Mm -hmm. and, here and then she it, captures she captures yeah. the knight because this knight was hanging yeah so point. it may not have been the best moment to push because it did lose the pawn for her I, yes. it is unfortunate but after bishop oh. thinks you have a knight e6 late Jia has stepped into the knight no. fork and is losing a piece no but you see what what uh, how you find is doing? she's sacrificing puns which is it's just it's just like she's a pawn down, but she has these little tricks prepared for it. For it. Very nice. dynamic sure play, yeah. That. Yifan, Yifan is going for very brave, bold moves. It doesn't always pay off, but she has played really fighting and inspiring chess when it comes to not fearing being material down. It's true, Katty, that she did this in many games, going up yeah. a pawn or two, just yeah, giving I, it I up for activity. <laughs> I may lose, but never give it in myself. <laughs> oh, yeah, I like material too much. Free stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we're not giving, we're taking free stuff. Well, this game, if Yifan wins, I'm afraid for letting Jia, there will not be enough time to make a comeback. It depended, I think, in the on the previous game where letting Jia had the upper hand but blundered 
her knight. The knight was trapped on h5, and now with a three-point lead and only a minute and a half left, I think it's almost safe to say that we have a winner, but what a match this has been. And this final game will be a treat, a Berlin end game we have seen as the theme of the day for many of the early Blitz games. Yeah, absolutely. I I, I mastered in this uh, in this opening. I can start to play <laughs> E4 <laughs> or, or E5. <laughs> yeah. Just watching these matches, I learned so much already. It has been such an exciting match. And even this penultimate game the bullet game where letting Jie uh, had a really nice advantage and if it wasn't for missing g4 that won her knight on h5 i think she had a good chance to win that game if she had won that game she was gonna tie the score so it's crazy yeah. how that one game decided the fate of the match in this final bullet phase even if the result is now pretty much guaranteed with 40 seconds to go do not go anywhere because we will have the players joining us after this final bullet game. We will have both of these amazingly strong ladies joining us for an interview. Yes, and we want to hear from, from them and we have so many things to ask them. But look at this, if how you find doesn't make any move. The actual time on the, of the of the segment will run faster than her time. <laughs> so I she, think she's still she's trying. Perfect. It has been such an exciting match and Yifan going for it. It didn't matter whether she's leading or not in the match. She always went for those pawn sacrifices, dynamic chess. We love to see how much both of these ladies were trying their very best to play just a very exciting match of chess, blitz chess and bullet. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. They both know the result, but still they are keeping it going. Uh, I don't know. I'm, mm, I really wanted to see some more of their games because we as almost got the, it. We almost we got mentioned, it. Yes, as we mentioned earlier, this is the first time they ever played chess game uh, um, for, against each other. So it was really, really nice to see these amazing uh, players facing each other and competing each other. So here we have, here we have the final result, and the winner of the match is how you fun. We will have the players joining us shortly. Well, what an exciting day this has been. Leiting Jia having chances in the bullet phase, even at the very end, that penultimate game just before Yifan won the next game was, I believe, a key turning point. We will talk to the players in a moment. So don't go anywhere. We're going to take a short break to bring in the players and ask them about how they felt about this match.
And we are being joined by the heroes of this match, Hirfan and Ting Jet. Thank you so much for joining our show. What a match this has been. It came down the wire. We thought that may be a tiebreaker. Congratulations to Yifan. And let me ask the first question to Ting Jia because it felt like in the bullet portion, you almost tied the score. How did it feel from the inside? And where do you think it went wrong in this final phase of the match? Actually, this uh, this match was very tough because you know my opponents are very strong, <laughs> and uh, I didn't do well in five plus one. And okay, five plus one is almost my problem. Then after five plus one, and I catch up a little bit in straight plus one. In bullets, I think. Uh, I made a lot of uh, mistakes. So, yeah. And the congratulations to my opponents. That's, How did uh, you feel good. about the match, Yifan, uh, when looking at those games and uh, the bullet phase? Or would you highlight any other part of the match in particular? Uh, well, as Tim just said, actually, it's a tough match, I guess, for both of the players, as most of the times the score were kind of like a tie. I mean, I I, I, I got some advantage uh, after five plus one, but I think uh, Tim uh, had a verified back in three plus one, especially I think I at some moments, I lost three games or four games in a row. I don't remember exactly. Yeah. And in bullet chess, I also felt like, I mean, there are definitely mistakes, I, I believe, especially when the clock goes down to the seconds. But in, in general, I felt like uh, the quality of this bullet match somehow was better than my previous matches i guess yeah so yeah i also thought the the, the score was more, uh, mainly very close and i thought the turning point uh, like i i think i won this uh this game with white like the ultimate round something like that no no three rounds before the final one uh where i had a pawn down so i guess that's probably kind of the turning point but you know it's like a blitz chess especially bullet so that's you know that's hard to predict anything right and latently, did you have some special preparation for this match or this tournament? Because here we have three different segments, three different time uh, control, uh, small segments. And did you have something special that you were working for it? No, I think so, because uh, I just play my normal chess. I didn't prepare for some special I think play the normal chess is the best way to play some blitz and bullet because uh, you just play your favorite and you have a good understanding, then you can play good. If and same question to you, if you can reflect on the preparation as well. Obviously, you're making it to the final against Harika Jonavali, so we don't ask for any secret information, but anything that you can reveal about your preparation for today. Well, to be honest, there is no secret for me at all. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy to discuss. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the only preparation I did is trying to ensure that the connection was kind of stable. And this was thanks to Ignite that allowed me to have only one camera running on the time and the other at the backup at the local place. So I guess that's the only thing I was trying to figure out technically. And uh, chess-wise, really mm, nothing special. Yeah, and I, I think I played really this um, uh, several speed chess events before. So yeah, I, I feel like it's just a process of, uh, let's say, uh, enjoyment. So that's a very good experience in general. And Yifan, we are dying to know. Myself, I'm sure Anna too, and our chat too. We know that you're working at the university and we're dying to know what is your positions there and what is your job like? <laughs> well, <it's> not... <laughs> that, that was unexpected to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm working as a professor there. So in two departments, and coincidentally, uh, we just had our like final exam period to, I mean, my, cl my class is finished like about a week ago or maybe two weeks ago. And so now we are finalizing all these like scores uh, and uh, concluding the past term or terms because this is also like a one academic year in China. So uh, there are all these uh, 
lectures like teaching stuff and also the projects going on and also there's some administrative works so that's how things looks like in general we hope that you will keep going very well in your academic career but also obviously many of the viewers are rooting for you to make a comeback at competitive chess too maybe over the board as well when the world opens up and Tingjie, you are a very active player do you have any future plans upcoming events that you can tell the viewers about Mm -hmm. Upcoming events. Will you participate in any tournaments or do you have many training plans for the upcoming months? Okay, I think uh, I don't have enough tournaments to play, just like online tournaments. I just streaming and uh, nothing special. I I'm just waiting for the tournament. So yeah, I just be I'm just be a professional player right now. Can I ask you as, a, as an additional question, since you've just played against Yifan, how much of a motivation is it for you that you have Yifan as a four-time women's world champion? Does that motivate you even more to work hard and also achieve that title? <laughs> it's hard to say now. And I think we just played two games before I don't know how okay, can we just play two games before. And right now she is coaching me as well because we have junior bar challenger events and we have some progress like, uh, okay, she's also my coach. So I, I learned a, a lot uh, from her lessons. And so I don't know, I just try to um, try to play well and in the future, yeah, we'll see. I didn't know that you two are working together. That is very wholesome. And we wish the best for both of you in the, the training sessions and as well as future competitions. Getty, any final words about the match to the players? Uh, Yifan, from my side, I just want to wish you the best of luck for tomorrow, obviously. Thank you. It was it was amazing. It was amazing. Thank you so much for this fight and for the spirits that you showed to us and for all these beautiful combinations. Thank you so much. Thanks to both of you and best of luck tomorrow, Yifan. Thank you. Bye. That has been such a wholesome match, a very exciting match. And at the same time, we just learned that uh, Ting Ya is working with Yifan as some of the training sessions are, are hosted by Yifan herself. It's amazing to know how the four-time Women's World Champion is now helping the next generation of players. Obviously, we, we are rooting for Yifan to come back to competitive chess over the board tournaments as well. But for now, she's in the final of our online Women's Speed chess championship facing tomorrow Harika Dronavali getting your thoughts on this final clash for the $20,000 first prize oh my god I can't wait to see that and I will be here I'll be here and rooting for both of them both of them of course obviously the time will be confirmed as soon as our team can talk to Yifan we needed to wait to know who is going to win today's match. It's most likely will be a similar starting time as today or even a bit earlier. So stay tuned for the announcement. You can always see the schedule on Chess TV. I think for now it is scheduled for about half past four or 4 a.m. Pacific, but you will be able to see the exact starting time on Chess TV. And if you hit the follow button, that heart, it's free to click on it. You'll be notified when we go live with tomorrow's final. Katie, it has been a pleasure hosting today's broadcast with you. It was the first time we did a coverage together, even though we have known each other for so long. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And I loved it, Anna. I really loved it. And I had such a joy here and players provided it on the chessboard. So <laughs> it was great, great uh, time to be here with you and hope that we will be working some other projects too. I hope so too. Tomorrow, Jen will join me for the final broadcast, but I hope that we get a chance to host future events together in the future. And huge shout out to our viewers, obviously, on Twitch and on YouTube. Thank you for tuning in to the semifinals and see you all tomorrow for the final clash, Harika Dronavali versus Hui Fan. Bye.